Commonwealth of Kentucky. Office of the Governor. Andy Bashir Governor. Dear Kentucky Driver. We are privileged each time we get behind the wheel of a vehicle and drive down one of Kentucky's scenic back roads or expansive highways. Along with this privilege comes a great responsibility, something we should keep in the forefront of our minds as we traverse the Commonwealth. This manual is created to give you the proper foundation for carefully and responsibly taking on your role as a new driver. Study it well and you will be on your way to an enjoyable and safe driving experience. Ream 1 Bear to always wear your seatbelt, require the same of passengers, and make sure that all children are secured in a federally approved child restraint seat. Obey Kentucky's traffic laws. They are on the books to protect the safety and well-being of everyone who travels throughout the Bluegrass State. Best wishes for a safe and pleasurable driving experience. Team. Kentucky. Commonwealth of Kentucky. Kentucky State Police. Philip Burnett, Jr. Commissioner Dear Kentucky Driver The Kentucky Driver's Manual has been prepared by the Kentucky State Police to provide you with the knowledge and basic skills to become a safe and courteous driver. By thoroughly studying this manual, you will develop good driving habits and a better understanding the traffic laws of Kentucky. It should be your goal to learn everything you can before starting your driving career. By committing yourself to this goal, you will in turn make the roadways of Kentucky safer for everyone. I would like to remind you that Kentucky law requires the use of safety belts and approved child restraint seats. These laws were passed to protect you and your passengers, and they are strictly enforced. I sincerely hope your driving experience is enjoyable and that you commit to making our roadways safe by following the traffic laws of the Kentucky. Wishing you the very best with your new driving privilege. Sincerely, Philip Burnett, Junior Commissioner, Kentucky State Police. Table of Contents Section 1 The Driver's License 1 About this manual 1 Types of driver's licenses and driver's permits 1 Licensing Requirements 4 Testing Requirements and Preparation 1-0 Test Scheduling 1-3 Out-of-state license or driving on an existing license 1-3 Driver license renewal and updates 1-6 Loss of driving privileges 1-6 Section 2 General Information 19 Motor Vehicle Registration 19 Insurance Law 19 Medical Review Board 20 Motor Vehicles and the Environment 21 Organ Donation 21 Section 3 Be in Shape to Drive 22 Vision 22 Hearing 22 Fatigue 22 Driver Distractions 23 Emotions, Aggressive Driving and Road Rage 23 Aging Drivers 24 Alcohol, Other Drugs and Driving 25 Section 4 Before You Drive 28 Inspecting Your Vehicle 28 Adjusting Seat and Mirrors 28 Using Safety Belts 29 Contents I Airbags 30 Child Passenger Safety Laws 31 Secure Your Load 31 Advanced Driver Assistance Systems ADAS Safety Features 32 Section 5 Basic Driving 33 Starting the Engine 33 Moving the vehicle 33. Stopping the vehicle 33. Steering 33. Backing up 33. Section 6 Rules of the Road 34. Yielding right of way 34. Traffic control devices 34. Traffic signs 35. Pavement markings 39. Other lane controls 39. Section 7 General Driving 42 Turning and Turnabouts 42 Intersections 43 Roundabouts and Traffic Circles 44 Rules for School Buses 44 Parking 44 Use of Lanes 46 Entering a Multi-Lane Highway 47 
Exiting a Roadway 47. Passing 47. Section 8 Safe Driving Tips 49. Visual Search 49. Speed Management 49. Stopping Distance 50. Space Management 51. Contents 2. Backing 52. Communicating 52. Section 9 Emergency Situations and Avoiding Crashes 54. Emergencies and Avoiding Crashes 54. Collisions 55. Vehicle Malfunctions 56. Section 10 Sharing the Road 58. Pedestrians 58. Bicyclists 59. Motorcyclists 61. Commercial Vehicles 62. Emergency Vehicles 63. Police and Traffic Stop 64. Move Over Laws 64. Slow Moving Vehicles 65. All Terrain Vehicles ATVs 65. Section 11 Special Driving Situations 67. Night Driving 67. Funeral Procession 67. Work Zones 68. Rural Road Driving 68. Autocycle 69. Safe Trailering 69. Section 12 Test Your Knowledge 71. Section 1. The Driver's License. About this manual. Any new or current resident of Kentucky who plans to drive a motor vehicle on Kentucky roadways must first secure a Kentucky driver's license. Kentucky issues a driver's license to ensure that each driver has the basic skills necessary to be a safe, efficient, and responsible driver. Safe driving may be achieved by acquiring the necessary skills, mastering those skills through practice, being mindful of safe driving practices, and adhering to Kentucky traffic laws. The purpose of this manual is to help all drivers achieve a basic understanding of safe driving skills and best practices. It also provides a review of the licensing process and Kentucky traffic law. Studying the contents of this manual is the best way to prepare for the testing required to obtain a Kentucky driver's license. Types of driver's licenses and driver's permits In Kentucky, there are several types of driver's licenses represented by classes and the vehicle driven determines the type of license needed. The Class A, B, and C licenses are types of commercial licenses. The Class D license is the basic operator's license. The Class E is for mopeds only, and the Class M is for motorcycles. Commercial Driver's License, CDL, Class A, Class B, Class C. Commercial motor vehicle means a motor vehicle or combination motor vehicle used on a highway in interstate commerce to transport passengers or property. Commercial drivers are persons who operate commercial motor vehicles whether they are employed to do so or not. This means the CDL requirements apply to volunteer drivers, such as church bus drivers, private and public school bus drivers, mechanics, salesmen, etc. Commercial drivers must have one of the following three classes of CDL. Class A, any combination of vehicles with a gross combination weight rating of 26,001 pounds or more provided that the gross vehicle weight rating of the towed vehicle is in excess of 10,000 pounds. Class B, any single vehicle with a gross combination weight rating of 26,001 or more pounds or any such vehicle towing a vehicle not in excess of 10,000 pounds gross combination weight rating. Class C, any single vehicle with a gross combination weight rating of less than 26,001, which is placarded for hazardous materials or designed to transport more than 16, 16, people including the vehicle driver. A commercial driver's license is not required for Operators of passenger trucks and cars, motorcycles, and mopeds that do not meet CDL requirements and not used for commerce. Non-civilian operators of military vehicles owned and operated by the military. Operators of fire trucks and rescue vehicles, while such vehicles are being used in emergency and related operations. Operators of recreational vehicles, not for commerce. A driver of vehicles used exclusively in farm-to-market agricultural transportation, owned, 
and operated by the farmer or his employees, and used within 150 miles of the point of origin. Additional information can be found on the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, KYTC, website drive.ky.gov and in the CDL manual. Operator's License, Class D A Class D operator's license is the driver's license required to operate a motor vehicle. The Class D license is the class most commonly held by Kentucky drivers and is the primary focus of this manual. Any current or new resident of Kentucky who plans to drive a motor vehicle will need an operator's license. Applicants must be a Kentucky resident and be at least 16 years of age. If the applicant is under the age of 18, a parent or legal guardian must sign the application. All first-time applicants must pass the vision, knowledge, and skills tests. A Kentucky driver's license is not required for any person in the armed forces of the United States who has an operator's license from the United States and who is operating an official vehicle in the course of service to our country. Members of the military on active duty and their dependents who hold a valid license from another state. Non-residents working in Kentucky who hold a valid license from another state. Operators of road machinery, farm tractors, or other farm implements being used for the purpose for which they are designed. The following are not eligible for a license. Anyone under 16 years of age. Anyone whose license is currently suspended or revoked. Any person judged by a court to be mentally incompetent. Anyone who has a physical or mental impairment which makes it unsafe to drive. Any person who is unable to understand highway warnings or directions in the English language. Moped License, Class E. A moped is defined as either a motorized bicycle whose frame design may include one or more horizontal crossbars supporting a fuel tank so long as it also has pedals, or a motorized bicycle with a step-through type frame which may or may not have pedals, rated no more than 2, 2, brake horsepower, a cylinder capacity not exceeding 50, 50, cubic centimeters, an automatic transmission not requiring clutching or shifting by the operator after the drive system is engaged, and capable of a Maximum speed of not more than 30, 30 miles per hour. If you are not sure about the vehicle, contact your local county clerk's office or a KYTC regional office to determine the classification of your vehicle and if the vehicle needs to be licensed. To be able to legally operate a moped in Kentucky, you must be at least 16 years old and already be holding a learner's permit, driver's license, motorcycle permit, or motorcycle license. If you currently do not hold any of the above, you can apply for a Class E license at any driver licensing regional office. Applicants are required to pass the general knowledge and vision tests to be issued a moped license. However, a skills test and permit are not required. Mopeds are more complicated to ride and operate than bicycles, but simpler than motorcycles. Familiarity with controls can be learned by operating the vehicle in a parking lot or other off-street area. Since mopeds are not easily seen in the traffic flow, it is vital that you surround yourself with as large a space cushion as possible. Riding with the headlight on and bike flags will help others see you. Moped operators are not required to wear helmets or eye protection devices, but they are strongly recommended. Mopeds cannot be operated on limited access highways where the minimum speed is more than 30, 30 miles per hour. Additional information can be found on the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet website drive.ky.gov. Motorcycle Permit or License, Class M A motorcycle is defined as any motor-driven vehicle having a seat or saddle for the use of the operator and designed to travel on not more than three wheels in contact with the ground but excluding mopeds tractors, and vehicles on which the operator and passengers ride in an enclosed cab. Motorbikes, minibikes, motor scooters, and any other small vehicles may not be operated upon the street or highway without first meeting the requirements for a regular motor vehicle, such as registration plate, and the operator must have a license to operate the vehicle. The only place a driver may legally ride or operate this type of vehicle without an operator's license and other safety equipment is on private property. Motorcycle permits and licenses are issued at any Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Driver Licensing Regional Office. 
a person who possesses a valid intermediate motor vehicle operator's license or a person who is at least 18, 18 years of age may apply for an instruction permit to operate a motorcycle. If the person is under the age of 18, 18, the instruction permit application shall be signed by the applicant's parent or legal guardian who is willing to assume responsibility. This is true even if the parent or legal guardian has already signed the driver license application allowing the minor to drive a moped or motor vehicle. All traffic laws and regulations apply equally to passenger car and motorcycle operators. To obtain a motorcycle license in Kentucky, you must first apply for a motorcycle instruction permit by providing the required information for an application such as proof of residency, full name, date of birth, and social security number. The next steps in the licensing process begins with a vision screening test and a general knowledge permit test. After holding the permit for the required time, the applicant may take the road skills test administered by the Kentucky State Police. Upon successful completion of the road skills test and payment of the applicable licensing fee, the instruction permit can be upgraded to a full license. Another way to obtain a motorcycle license is to present a certificate of completion from a motorcycle rider education course that is approved by Kentucky's Motorcycle Rider Safety Education Program, RideSmart KY, and payment of the applicable licensing fee. RideSmart KY RideSmart KY is a motorcycle rider safety education program administered through the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety. In addition to creating safer riders, it offers an alternative way to obtain a motorcycle license. RideSmart KY offers motorcycle rider training courses designed to develop and instill knowledge, attitudes, habits, and skills necessary for proper operation of a motorcycle. Rider training courses are open to anyone interested in applying for a license and a motorcycle license or permit is not required to sign up for the training. Applicants for a motorcycle license will be exempted from the licensing written and skills tests if they present satisfactory evidence of successful completion of an approved rider training course. Completion of a Kentucky Office of Highway Safety approved rider training course will also allow a person whose motorcycle instruction permit has expired to apply for a motorcycle operator's license or endorsement by presenting proof of successful completion. For additional information on the entire program, please visit the program website, ride.ky.gov, or call 502-564-1568. Licensing Requirements to be eligible to apply for a Kentucky operator's license, motorcycle license, or moped license, you must have reached your 16th birthday, and your driving privilege must not have been withdrawn in this state or any other state. The process for obtaining a license varies based on the applicant's age and the type of license desired. However, all applicants will begin the process by completing an application at a Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Regional Driver Licensing Office. After the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet has prepared the application, the Kentucky State Police will administer all required tests. First, Kentucky State Police will administer a vision screening test to determine if you meet minimum visual requirements and a written knowledge test of the information contained in the corresponding manual, driver, motorcycle, or CDL. An applicant for a moped license, who has no other type of license, must take only the vision, screening test and driver written test to secure a license. For all other license classes, the next step is to secure an instruction permit. After passing the required vision and knowledge tests, you will return to the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Regional Office where they will issue an instruction permit. The instruction permit is valid for a period determined by the type of license for which you are applying. After you receive your instruction permit, you will be required to hold that permit for a designated time before you are eligible to take the road test. Your age at the time of application and the type of license applied for will determine the length of that waiting period. Use the permit phase of licensing to practice skills and safe driving practices covered in this manual. After holding your instruction permit for the designated waiting period, the Kentucky State Police will then administer the skills test commonly referred to as the road test. Upon successful completion of the road test, you will return to the driver licensing regional office where they will issue you a license. 
permit holders ages 16 and 17 are subject to the additional requirements of the Graduated Driver License Program. A step-by-step -step guide for applying for a license, including Graduated Driver License Program requirements are listed below. Applicants under age 18, Graduated Driver License Program Information for teen drivers and parents slash guardians It is up to the parents slash legal guardians to decide when their teen is ready to drive. Drivers under the age of 18 cannot apply for a permit or license without the signature of a parent or legal guardian accepting responsibility. The parent slash legal guardian is jointly liable with the applicant for any damages by signing the application form. The parent slash legal guardian must complete the form at the testing location so that an official can witness the signature and verify guardianship. A birth certificate or guardianship paper signed by a judge must be provided. A parent slash legal guardian has the right to withdraw their responsibility at any time. The parent slash legal guardian withdrawal of responsibility form must be completed and submitted to a transportation cabinet regional office. Once this is received and entered, the minor's permit or license will be cancelled until another application is signed. Drivers under 18 must go through three phases of licensing, a learner's permit, an intermediate license, and then a full unrestricted license. Parents slash legal guardians play a significant role in their teen's licensing process. Parents become role models, teachers, monitors, and supervisors when their teen is learning to drive. Additional information on the Graduated Driver Licensing Program along with helpful information for teens and parents can be found at drive.ky.gov. Step 1. Permit Phase Drivers must be at least 16 years of age to take the vision and written knowledge tests and apply for a permit. Required documents to bring when applying for a permit. Original birth certificate or certified copy. Social security card, bring card as proof. One proof of residency, two, for a real ID. School compliance verification form issued by their school. No pass slash no drive law. Applicants under 18 need a parent or legal guardian asterisk to sign the application, taking financial responsibility for the applicant. Asterisk a legal guardian must have a certified copy of the court-ordered guardianship documents. The documents must be signed by a judge and entered into the court record. Photocopies will not be accepted for any required documents. Here is a list of valid proof documents. If you pass the written and vision tests, a distinctive under-21 permit will be issued to all applicants. Permit holders ages 16 to 20 must hold the driving permit for a minimum of 180 days. To be eligible for an intermediate license, a driver must complete a practice driving log with a minimum of 60 hours of practice driving. 10 hours must be completed at night. For the practice driving log, click here. Permit Driving Permit holders may only drive when accompanied, in the front passenger seat, by a licensed driver 21 years of age or older and shall have the instruction permit in possession at all times when operating a motor vehicle. Passenger restriction, limited to 1, 1, unrelated person under 20 years of age. Permit holders under the age of May 18 not drive between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m. unless the person can demonstrate good cause for driving. The driver will not receive credit toward the 180-day permit period while suspended for not complying with the no-pass-slash-no-drive law, KRS 159.051. For additional information regarding this law, click here. Driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs is prohibited. All drivers under 21 are subject to zero alcohol tolerance defined as 0 0.02 blood alcohol concentration. Violations of the permit restrictions, moving violations under KRS 189, traffic regulations, and violations under KRS 189A, driving under the influence, are not allowed for permit holders under the age of 18. If a violation of these laws occurs, it will add an additional minimum of 180, 180, days from the date of the violation before the driver may apply for an intermediate license. 
A driver under the age of 18 who accumulates more than six points may have their driving privilege suspended. Step 2. Intermediate License Phase after holding the permit for 180 days, the driver may schedule an appointment with the Kentucky State Police Driver Testing Branch to apply for their intermediate license. The intermediate license is obtained by passing the skills-slash-road test. Requirements for the road test Vehicles used for testing must be properly registered, and proof of liability insurance is required. One of the following will be required as proof. A proof of insurance card furnished by the insurance company. A current insurance policy for that vehicle. A binder from an insurance agent, in writing, stating that insurance is in force. Note, rental cars must have the driver's name listed on the rental contract as an operator. The practice driving log, signed and certified by the parent-slash-legal guardian, that lists 60 hours of practice driving, 10 of those hours being at night. The Graduated Driver License Skills Test Eligibility Letter Ensure the letter is within seven days of the print date. When a permit holder is operating a motor vehicle, they are required to be accompanied by a person with a valid operator's license who is at least 21 years of age occupying the front passenger seat beside the operator at all times. Therefore, it is unlawful for applicants to drive themselves to their road test appointment without meeting this requirement. Violations of this or other traffic laws at the test site will cause the test to be rescheduled. If you fail the road skills test, you must wait at least one week from the date of the failure before attempting the test again. Applicants are encouraged to practice during this time. If you pass the skills slash road test. After successfully completing the road test, the Kentucky State Police Examiner will place an intermediate license sticker on the driver's permit. After holding the intermediate license for 180 days and completing the required driver education course, see driver education training, the driver will be eligible for a full unrestricted license. Intermediate License Driving The driver shall have the intermediate license in possession at all times when operating a motor vehicle. The driver is not permitted to drive between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. unless the driver can demonstrate a good cause for driving such as emergencies, school, or work-related activities. Passenger restriction if the driver is under 18, limited to one, one, unrelated person under 20 years of age. Driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs is prohibited. All drivers under 21 years of age are subject to zero alcohol tolerance, defined as 0.02 blood alcohol concentration. Violations of the Intermediate License Restrictions, Moving Violations under KRS 189, Traffic Regulations, and Violations under KRS 189A, Driving under the Influence, are not permitted. If a violation of these laws occurs, it will add an additional minimum of 180, 180, days from the date of the violation before the driver may apply for a full unrestricted license. A driver under the age of 18 who accumulates more than six points may have their driving privilege suspended. Step 3. Full Unrestricted License Phase After completing the graduated licensing education course and holding the intermediate license for the full 180-day period, you may schedule an appointment at any driver licensing regional office to have your full unrestricted license issued. The office will issue a temporary license printed on paper to use until the license card is delivered by U.S. mail. One valid proof of residency, two for real ID, is required if the address listed on your intermediate license is not up to date. Driver Education Training and Full Licensure Kentucky has graduated licensing laws to improve traffic safety and reduce traffic accidents, injuries, and fatalities by controlling a young driver's exposure and progressively moving the driver into more complex driving experiences before full licensure. Drivers whose permits were Issued under 18 shall, before the person's 18th birthday, enroll in an approved driver training program and must complete the program before moving to the full, unrestricted licensing phase. Acceptable Methods of Training The classroom version is offered free of charge to KY drivers. Enroll for classroom version. The online version costs $11. Enroll for online version. 
driver education course at a high school. Private driver training course at a division of driver license approved driver training school, see below. Must include 4, 4, hours of classroom training. Approved driver training schools. ABC Driving School, 3002, Taylorsville Road. Louisville, Kentucky, 40205. 502-451-2222. Green Light Driving School, 13501 Aiken Road. Louisville, Kentucky, 40245. 502-254-1414. Kentucky Driving School, 4809 Poplar Level Road, Louisville, Kentucky, 40213. 502-456-5266. Preferred Driving School 8172, Mall Road, Suite 234. Florence, Kentucky, 41042. 859-525-4005. Sure Drive, Inc. 3033, Dixie Highway Building A, Suite 207. Edgewood, Kentucky, 41017. 859-331-0007. It is the responsibility of the young driver and the parents slash legal guardians to ensure that the driver enrolls in and completes one of the programs listed above. If the driver completed a class offered by Alive at 25 or through the online provider Right Lane, they do not need to submit their completion to the Division of Driver Licensing. Completions will take two full business days for processing before the driver can be issued a full unrestricted license. All other completions can be mailed to the address below. Please ensure that the driver's license slash permit number, name, and date of birth are on the completed form or transcript. It is the driver's responsibility to supply the Division of Driver Licensing with the completed information. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Division of Driver Licensing Driver Education Attention, Driver Education 200, Marrow Street Frankfort, Kentucky, 40622 502-564-1257 Applicants age 18 to 20 Step 1, Permit Phase Drivers must schedule an appointment with the Kentucky State Police, KSP, to take the written and vision test to apply for a permit. To schedule a written and vision test appointment with KSP, click here. Bring the required documents listed below with you to your KSP written and vision test appointment. Required Documents to Bring When Applying for a Permit 1. 1. Proof of Identity Document, Original Birth Certificate or Certified Copy 1. 1. Proof of Social Security Number, Bring Social Security Card as Proof 1. 1. Proof of Applicant's Kentucky Residency, Dated Less Than One Year 2. 2. Are Required for a Real ID If your current legal name, date of birth, or gender is different than what is displayed on your identity or lawful status document, you must show legal proof of the changes. Your name must be updated on your social security card before applying for a driver's license. Photocopies will not be accepted for any required documents. Here is a list of valid proof documents. Once you pass the written and vision tests, get in line with the Transportation Cabinet Regional Office to apply for your permit credential. You will be issued a temporary permit printed on paper to use until the credential arrives in the mail. This permit is valid for three years and may be renewed. If the permit is not renewed within one year of the expiration date, the written and vision tests must be repeated. You must hold the permit for 180 days before you are eligible to take the road test. The permit phase should be used by the permit holder to practice the safe driving skills and best practices covered later in this manual. Remember, all permit holders must be accompanied by a person with a valid operator license who is 21 years of age or older and always occupying the passenger seat beside them while driving. Step 2. Full Unrestricted License After holding the permit for 180 days, you may schedule an appointment with the Kentucky State Police to take the road skills test to apply for your full unrestricted license. To schedule a road skills test appointment with KSP, click here.
Requirements for the Road Test Vehicles used for testing must be appropriately registered, and proof of liability insurance is required. One of the following is required as proof of liability insurance. A proof of insurance card from the insurance company. A current insurance policy for that vehicle. A binder from an insurance agent, in writing, stating that insurance is in force. When a permit holder is operating a motor vehicle, they are required to be accompanied by a person with a valid operator's license who is at least 21 years of age occupying the front passenger seat at all times. Therefore, it is unlawful for applicants to drive themselves to their road test appointment without meeting this requirement. Violations of this or other traffic laws at the test site will cause the test to be rescheduled. If you fail the road skills test, you must wait at least one week from the date of the failure before attempting the test again. Applicants are encouraged to practice during this time. After passing the road skills test, you will get in line at the Transportation Cabinet Regional Office to apply for your license credential. You will be issued a temporary permit printed on paper to use until the credential arrives in the mail. Asterisk if your current address differs from what is listed on your permit, make sure to bring a valid proof of residency with you. 2. 2. Forms of proof will be required if applying for a real ID. Applicants age 21 and over Step 1, Permit Phase. Drivers must schedule an appointment with the Kentucky State Police to take the written and vision test to apply for a permit. To schedule your test appointment, click here. Bring the following documents with you to your vision and written test appointment. Required documents to bring when applying for a permit. 1. 1. Proof of identity document, original birth certificate or certified copy. 1. 1. Proof of social security number. Bring Social Security Card. 1. 1. Proof of applicant's Kentucky residency, dated less than one year. 2. 2. Are required for a real ID. If your current legal name, date of birth, or gender is different than what is displayed on your identity or lawful status document, you must show legal proof of the changes. Your name must be updated on your Social Security Card before applying for a driver's license. Photocopies will not be accepted for any required documents. Here is a list of valid proof documents. After passing the written and vision tests, get in line at the Transportation Cabinet Regional Office to apply for your permit credential. You will be issued a temporary permit printed on paper to use until the credential arrives in the mail. This permit is valid for three years and may be renewed. If the permit is not renewed within one year of the expiration date, the written and vision tests must be repeated. You must hold the permit for 30 days before you are eligible to take the road test. Practice is encouraged during this 30-day period. Remember, all permit holders must be accompanied by a person with a valid operator license who is 21 years of age or older and always occupying the passenger seat beside them while driving. Step 2 Full Unrestricted License After holding the permit for 30 days, you may schedule an appointment to take the road skills test to apply for your full unrestricted license. To schedule a road test appointment with Kentucky State Police, click here. Requirements for the Road Test Vehicles used for testing must be properly registered and proof of liability insurance is required. One of the following will be required as proof of liability insurance. A proof of insurance card furnished by the insurance company. A current insurance policy for that vehicle. A binder from an insurance agent, in writing, stating that insurance is in force. When a permit holder is operating a motor vehicle, they are required to be accompanied by a person with a valid operator's license who is at least 21 years of age occupying the front passenger seat at all times. Therefore, it is unlawful for applicants to drive themselves to their road test appointment without meeting this requirement. Violations of this or other traffic laws at the test site will cause the test to be rescheduled. If you fail the road skills test, you must wait at least one week from the date of the failure before attempting the test again. Applicants are encouraged to practice during this time. After passing the road skills test, you will get in line at the Transportation Cabinet Regional Office to apply for your license credential. 
you will be issued a temporary permit printed on paper to use until the credential arrives in the mail. If your current address differs from what is listed on your permit, make sure to bring a valid proof of residency with you, too, too. Forms of proof will be required if applying for a real ID. Testing Requirements Slash Preparation Vision Screening A vision screening is required for all first-time applicants. A minimum visual acuity of 2040s, corrected or uncorrected, is required before the applicant will be allowed to move on to the written test. If corrective lenses are needed to achieve this standard, the applicant's driving privileges will be restricted to mandate the use of corrective lenses. If the applicant does not meet the minimum visual acuity standards, they will be referred to a vision specialist for further examination. After the referral has been completed, applicants whose visual acuity is 2060 or better shall be eligible to test for an instruction permit or operator's license. If corrective lenses were prescribed by the vision specialist, the person's driving privileges shall be restricted to mandate the use of the corrective lenses. Applicants whose visual acuity is less than what is described above may qualify to participate in the Kentucky Bioptic Driving Program, which is administered by the Kentucky Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. Applicants can receive special training from this certified driver training program, allowing them to drive with a bioptic telescopic device restriction. Visit the Kentucky Bioptic Driving Program website for additional information about the program. Contact the program by phone at 1-800-346-2115. Written Test The written test is based on the type of license for which the applicant has applied. The test will contain questions regarding driving rules, regulations, procedures, and highway signs. Applicants should study the manual specific to the type of license they desire, operator, motorcycle, or CDL. For the operator test, you will find all information for the test in this manual. Review of the manual in its entirety is recommended. Applicants must make a minimum score of 80% to pass this test. Tests can be given orally for applicants who cannot read the English language. However, the signs portion of the test must be answered by applicants from their own knowledge and understanding. All testing offices are equipped with tablet devices that will present the test audibly in English and several foreign languages. A special appointment is not needed to utilize this feature. However, a special appointment will be needed for the test to be orally administered or if an interpreter is needed. The written test is available in the following languages. Albanian Kinyarwanda Arabic asterisk Korean Bosnian Laotian Burmese asterisk Pashto Cambodian Polish Chinese asterisk Romanian Croatian Russian Dari Somali asterisk Farsi Spanish asterisk French asterisk Swahili German Thai Hindi Turkish Japanese asterisk Vietnamese Asterisk these languages are available on the testing software and may be taken electronically upon request. Additionally, these languages are available in audio form. Road, Skills, Test The examiner will first inspect the vehicle, which includes examining the vehicle registration and insurance documents. Rental vehicles are allowed only if the applicant's name appears on the rental contract as an operator of the vehicle. An examiner will accompany you on the road test and will occupy the passenger side of the front seat. Therefore, the passenger compartment, seat, and floor area must be clean or the vehicle may be rejected. However, the signs portion of the test must be answered by applicants from their own knowledge and understanding. All testing offices are equipped with tablet devices that will present the test audibly in English and several foreign languages. A special appointment is not needed to utilize this feature. However, a special appointment will be needed for the test. Both driver and examiner must wear seat belts if the vehicle was factory equipped with seat belts. The seat belts must be clean and in working order. Applicants will be required to drive in traffic, encountering normal situations. The examiner will not play tricks during the road test, and you will not be required to do anything unlawful or illegal. Interpreters are not permitted in the vehicle during the road test. However, an interpreter may be present both before and after the test to assist as needed. 
preparing for the vehicle inspection. For the vehicle inspection, the examiner will first review the vehicle registration and insurance documents. The applicant will then be required to demonstrate a knowledge of how to operate the following. Headlights Turn signals Dimmer switch Emergency brake Horn Emergency flashers Windshield wipers Brake lights the vehicle will also be physically inspected to ensure it can be safely and lawfully operated. Therefore, a review of the following equipment items is recommended. Brakes A motor vehicle shall be equipped with brakes adequate to control the movement of, and to stop and hold, the vehicle. There shall be separate means of applying the brakes, each of which shall be effective to apply the brakes to at least two wheels. If the separate means are in any way connected, they shall be so constructed that failure of any one part of the operating mechanism shall not leave the motor vehicle without brakes on at least two wheels. Lights Your vehicle must have two headlights and two taillights. Headlights on high beam must be strong enough to light the road sufficiently to reveal a person 350 feet ahead and 100 feet ahead on low beam. They must not shine a glaring light into the eyes of an oncoming driver. The rear light, or tail light, must be red and must be lighted and placed so it can be seen 500 feet behind your vehicle. All motor vehicles must have brake lights. Motor vehicles are required to be equipped with a mechanical signal device that would indicate an intention to stop or suddenly decrease speed by illuminating at least two red lights on the rear of the vehicle. License Plate the vehicle must be properly registered with the license plate properly displayed and unobstructed. The registration plate shall be kept legible at all times and must be illuminated at night. Windshield The vision of the driver should be unobstructed. It is unlawful to operate a motor vehicle with any sign, sunscreening material, product or covering on the windshield. Only certificates or papers required by law and sunscreening material along a strip at the top of the windshield are acceptable. A windshield wiper is also required on the driver's side of the windshield. The windshield on every motor vehicle shall be equipped with a device for cleaning rain, snow, or other moisture from the windshield. Horn Every motor vehicle, and bicycle, when in use on a highway, must be equipped with a horn or other device capable of making an abrupt sound sufficiently loud enough to be heard under ordinary traffic conditions. Muffler A muffler must be on the exhaust to reduce noise and annoying smoke, while protecting the occupants from poisonous fumes. Mirrors Mirrors must be located and adjusted so the driver can see to the rear of the vehicle. A vehicle must be equipped with one mirror mounted on the left side of the vehicle, and one mirror mounted either inside the vehicle approximately in the center or on the right side of the vehicle. Steering Steering must not be defective and in good condition. Turn signals Mechanical turn signals are required equipment on your vehicle and must be in working order. Safety belts and shoulder belts a person shall not operate a motor vehicle manufactured after 1981 on the public roadways unless the driver and all passengers are wearing a properly adjusted and fastened seat belt. Unlawful and Impermissible Equipment The examiner will inspect your vehicle to make sure it can be safely and lawfully operated on Kentucky roadways. Missing or inoperable equipment that would render the vehicle unlawful or unsafe may cause your test to be canceled or rescheduled. Unlawful or impermissible equipment on your vehicle, such as excessive window tint, flashing lights other than the turn signals, or any item that obstructs vision through the windshield could also cause the examiner to reject the vehicle for use during a road test. Road Test Scoring When a permit holder is operating a motor vehicle, they shall be accompanied by a person with a valid operator's license who is at least 21 years of age occupying the front passenger seat at all times. Therefore, it is unlawful for applicants to drive themselves to their road test appointment without meeting this requirement. Violations of this or other traffic laws at the test site will cause the test to be rescheduled. The test will consist of stops, backing, turning the car around, stopping and starting on a hill, 
parallel parking, intersection approaches, clutch use, if applicable, speed, turns, lane use, right-of-way use, and overall vehicle control. Any collision, traffic violation, or dangerous act may result in automatic failure, and the test will not be completed. Failure to follow the examiner's instructions two times during the test will result in being disqualified. The applicant will be given a score sheet at the completion of the test, indicating whether he or she passed or failed. There will not be a numerical score on the score sheet. Should you not pass the road test, you must wait at least one week before taking the test again. Practice during this time is encouraged. Test Scheduling The Kentucky State Police offers testing services at Mulepole offices regionally located across the state. All testing is conducted by appointment only. To schedule an appointment for either the written test or the road test, please visit our website and use our online scheduling tool. Please note, appointments are released Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. and many locations will fill up quickly, so it is important to check the website early in the day to secure the desired appointment. When all available appointments have been scheduled, a no availability message will appear for the location. If you see this message, simply check back the next morning at 8 a.m. for the release of new appointments. Additionally, the schedule is maintained three weeks out. Therefore, if you desire a particular testing date, a 16th birthday for example, you should check the website three weeks in advance of the desired date. Remember, check the website early to secure your appointment. Applicants who require interpretive services or special assistance of any kind should contact the testing site directly prior to making an appointment. Find contact information for each testing location at Out-of-state license or driving on an existing license Transferring from another state Persons moving into Kentucky must obtain a Kentucky driver's license within 30 days of establishing residence. Kentucky driver's licenses and identification cards are issued at any Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Driver Licensing Regional Office. If your out-of-state license is valid or has been expired for less than one, one, year when you transfer to Kentucky, you will not be required to test. However, if the license has been expired for more than one, one, year at the time of transfer, you will be required to obtain a full, certified driver history record, DHR, or clearance letter from the previous state and will be required to take both the written and I exams before being issued a Kentucky operator's permit or license. If testing is required, click here to schedule an appointment with the Kentucky State Police. If you have lost your out-of-state license, but the license has not been expired for more than one, one, year, you need to obtain a DHR or clearance letter from the previous state. Documents Required to Transfer Out-of-State License the applicant will be required to provide one. 1. Form of proof of the applicant's Kentucky residency. 2. 2. Forms of proof will be required if the applicant is applying for a real ID. Additionally, the applicant will need to present valid proof documents for the following. Legal presence in the United States, such as a birth certificate or U.S. passport, and Social Security card, must bring your Social Security card as proof. Valid out-of-state license. If applicable, proof of any name change, gender change, or any additional documents. Out-of-state permit holders. You must be at least 16 years of age to transfer a driving permit or license to Kentucky. Out-of-state permit holders transferring to Kentucky must transfer their permit and be issued a Kentucky permit before applying for a Kentucky driver's license. If the out-of-state test scores are not submitted, then the permit-slash-license holder will be required to take the Kentucky Road Test. If under age 18, you must present a school compliance verification form signed by the out-of-state school, reference, no pass-slash-no drive law. This form can be obtained from the student's school district of residence. College Students a college student may drive on their valid out-of-state license and is not required to transfer that license to Kentucky if they are a citizen of the United States. They are enrolled as a full-time or part-time student at a university, college, or technical college located in Kentucky, and they must have a student identification card from the 
university, college, or technical college located in Kentucky in their immediate possession when driving in Kentucky. Non-U.S. Citizen Applicants All non-U.S. citizens and permanent residents may apply for a Kentucky driver's permit-slash-license-slash-ID card at any driver licensing regional office. If any testing is required, an appointment will need to be scheduled first with the Kentucky State Police by visiting the website here. All non-U.S. citizens may drive in the U.S. on their valid foreign license and international permit for up to one year from the date of admission into the U.S., provided their home country is part of the foreign license reciprocity. Drivers must obtain a Kentucky license within 30 days of establishing residency in Kentucky. Permanent residents are eligible to apply for a real ID. For more information on a real ID, click here. Non-U.S. citizens are not eligible to apply for a real ID. Permanent Residents A permanent resident who holds an international driver permit from a foreign license reciprocity country will be required to successfully pass the written knowledge driver's test and vision test. A permanent resident who holds an international driver permit but is not from a from a foreign license reciprocity country will be required to successfully pass the written knowledge driver's test, vision test, and road test. The applicant must start the driver licensing process with a driver's permit. A permanent resident who holds an international driver permit but holds a valid license from another United States state is not required to test in order to transfer a valid out-of-state license to a Kentucky driver license. A permanent resident who holds an international driver permit and the license has expired within one year and holds a valid license from another United States state is not required to test in order to transfer a valid out-of-state license to a Kentucky driver license. A permanent resident who does not hold an international driver permit will be required to successfully pass the written knowledge driver's test, vision test, and road test. The applicant must start the driver licensing process with a driver's permit. All testing is scheduled through the Kentucky State Police. Click here to schedule an appointment and bring all required documentation with you to your appointment. Non-Permanent Residents a non-permanent resident who holds an international driver permit from a foreign license reciprocity country will be required to successfully pass the written knowledge driver's test, vision test, and road test. A non-permanent resident who holds an international driver permit but is not from a foreign license reciprocity country will be required to successfully pass the written knowledge driver's test, vision test, and road test. The applicant must start the driver licensing process with a driver's permit. A non-permanent resident who holds an international driver permit but holds a valid license from another United States state is not required to test in order to transfer a valid out-of-state license to Kentucky. A non-permanent resident who holds an international driver permit and the license has expired within one year and holds a valid license from another United States state is not required to test to transfer a valid out-of-state license to a Kentucky driver license. A non-permanent resident who does not hold an international driver permit will be required to successfully pass the written knowledge driver's test, vision test, and road test. The applicant must start the driver licensing process with a driver's permit. All testing is scheduled through the Kentucky State Police. Click here to schedule an appointment and bring all required documentation with you to your appointment. Residents Serving in the Military Kentucky residents currently serving in the United States military who are stationed or assigned to a base or other location outside the boundaries of the Commonwealth may renew a Class D operator's license by mail. If a Kentucky resident has been serving in the United States military and has allowed their operator's license to expire, they shall, within 90 days of returning to the Commonwealth, be permitted to renew their license without having to take a written test or road test. A Kentucky resident serving in the United States military who does not renew their expired license within 90 days of returning to the Commonwealth shall be required to comply with all procedures of renewing a license that has expired. For additional information on military licenses, please visit drive.ky.gov. Driver License Renewal Slash Updates Renewals and Duplicate Licenses if the driver is under age 21, the license expires 90 days after the driver's 21st birthday. Age 21 and older, 
the license expires 31 days after the driver's birthday and may be renewed up to six months before the expiration date. No testing is required for a person with credentials expired less than five years. Any driver whose credential is expired more than five years must start over as a new driver. A Kentucky operator's license is valid for four, four, years or eight, eight, years. Eight-year credentials are only available for new standard licenses and real IDs. When drivers physically lose their operator's license, permit, or identification card, they will need to request a replacement credential by mail or by visiting any Transportation Cabinet Driver Licensing Regional Office. For further information on renewing a license or replacing a lost or stolen license, please visit drive.ky.gov. Change of Address or Name If you change your address or name for any reason, you must obtain a duplicate license within 10 days. You may be cited by a police officer for not changing your address or name. Drivers may apply for a duplicate with the updated address listed by mail or in person at any Transportation Cabinet Driver Licensing Regional Office. To change your name on your license, 1. 1. Proof of the name change is required. Birth certificate, name change court order, marriage license, divorce decree, or other legal documents. A Social Security card is not acceptable as proof of name change. However, you must provide proof of a new Social Security card with your new name to prove you have updated your name with the Social Security Administration. For further information on changing an address or name on your license, please visit drive.ky.gov. Loss of Driving Privileges Suspension or Revocation of License Your driver's license may be suspended or revoked for any of the following reasons. Perjury or false affidavit of information to the transportation cabinet. Operating a motor vehicle, motorcycle, or moped without a license. Operating a motor vehicle in violation of restrictions imposed by the transportation cabinet. Failure to maintain liability insurance. Failure to enroll in or complete state traffic school upon sentence by the court. Failure to satisfy a citation or court summons. Failing to pay child support. Fraudulent use of a driver's license to purchase or attempt to purchase alcoholic beverages. Reckless driving, 3, 3, convictions within 12, 12, months. Driving under the influence of alcohol or other substances, DUI. Refusing to take a chemical test when lawfully asked to do so by a law enforcement officer. Fleeing or evading police. Leaving the scene of a crash, failure to stop and disclose identity or render aid. Theft of gasoline. Theft of a motor vehicle or any part thereof. Felony involving use of a motor vehicle and manslaughter resulting from the operation of a motor vehicle. Cancellation of your driving privilege. If you are under 18 years of age, the parent or legal guardian who signed your driver license application can withdraw responsibility, resulting in the cancellation of your license. If the parent or legal guardian withdraws responsibility, you will have to wait until you are 18 years of age to obtain a permit and license. The parent-slash-legal guardian withdrawal of responsibility form must be completed and submitted to a Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Regional Office. Once this is received and entered, the minor's permit or license will be cancelled until another application is signed or the applicant reaches 18 years of age. Voluntarily Surrender Your Driver License A driver may choose to voluntarily surrender a Kentucky driver's license by completing the appropriate transportation cabinet form at any KYTC driver licensing regional office. To surrender a driver license, submit the completed form and your driver's license to the clerk at the regional office. Unsatisfied judgment. Any person failing to satisfy a judgment rendered against him for damages resulting from the operation of a motor vehicle, within 60 days from the date of said judgment shall have his driving privilege suspended by the transportation cabinet. The suspension will remain in effect indefinitely or until the judgment has been satisfied. Upon satisfaction, a court-attested copy of the satisfaction is to be sent to the transportation cabinet, and the necessary reinstatement procedures must be followed. The Kentucky Point System 
The purpose of the point system is to identify and assist drivers who need improvement before it becomes necessary to suspend their driving privilege. It serves to protect the safe and sensible drivers and to correct those who are reckless and irresponsible. Under the point system, a driver starts with no points but accumulates points for various offenses. Upon the accumulation of 12 points, 7 points if under age 18, within a two-year period, a driver's privilege to operate a motor vehicle may be suspended. Individuals are given an opportunity to meet with a hearing officer prior to any possible suspension. Points assessed under this system expire two, two, years from the date of conviction. However, the conviction entry remains part of the driver's record for a period of five, five, years from the conviction date. Upon the accumulation of 12, 12, or more points against a driver age 18, 18, or older or 7 points against a driver under age 18, the Transportation Cabinet conducts a hearing concerning the driver's privileges to operate a motor vehicle. Failure to appear for the hearing results in a driving suspension for a period of 6, 6, months for the first such accumulation of 12, 12, points, 1, 1, year for the second such. Accumulation of 12, 12, points, and 2. 2. Years for any subsequent accumulation of 12, 12, points within the 2, 2, year period. After a hearing, the department may require the driver to be placed on probation in lieu of suspension and attend a driver improvement clinic, state traffic school, approved by the transportation cabinet. Once a driver has been placed on probation by the department, he, she shall not be considered for probation again until a lapse of two, two, years from the ending date of any previous probation period granted, whether served or not. Additional information regarding the point system can be found on the Transportation Cabinet website at drive.ky.gov. Kentucky State Traffic School Program Kentucky State Traffic School is available online, in person, and in a virtual classroom. The primary purpose of State Traffic School is to promote safe and responsible driving. The goal of State Traffic School is to provide an educational program that renews a driver's outlook regarding traffic safety and to instill a positive attitude toward highway and traffic safety by encouraging an understanding and recognition of personal driving behaviors, which result in a reduced number of deaths and injuries related to vehicular crashes and moving hazardous violations. Eligibility a driver cannot be under suspension at the time of the citation. A driver cannot attend state traffic school for a conviction carrying mandatory license suspension. A driver can only attend with minor traffic violations. A driver can only complete state traffic school once every 12, 12 months. Non-licensed and out-of-state drivers are not eligible to attend state traffic school. All state traffic school referrals must come from the Kentucky District or Federal Court where the violation occurred. Process The District Court, where the citation was received, must refer a driver to Kentucky State Traffic School. The District Court will send the referral to the Division of Driver Licensing. The Division of Driver Licensing will mail a letter to the driver's address printed on their license at the time of referral. Follow the instructions listed in the letter carefully to enroll in the class. Once referred to Kentucky State Traffic School, it becomes a court order. If the driver does not comply with the court order to attend traffic school, it will suspend the driver's driving privileges. For more information on state traffic school and class options, please visit drive.ky.gov. Driver Substance Abuse Education Program Every offender convicted of DUI must be assessed in a program licensed and certified by the Cabinet for Human Resources, CHR. After the assessment, every individual must attend a CHR-approved alcohol education or treatment program. Satisfactory completion is required before reinstatement of driving privileges may occur. The individual must pay all mandatory alcohol assessment, education, or treatment fees to the program. With payment of the required fee for license reinstatement, a notice of completion from an approved DUI program, and after expiration of the period of license suspension, an individual convicted of DUI is eligible to get his license reissued. Section 2 General Information 
Motor Vehicle Registration Kentucky law requires that before the owner of a motor vehicle may operate or permit its operation upon a highway, the owner must apply for registration with the county clerk in the owner's county of residence. Additionally, a person who purchases a motor vehicle or brings a motor vehicle into Kentucky from another state must make application for registration within 15, 15 days. Once registered, the owner shall again register the vehicle on or before the date on which the certificate of registration expires. There is no grace period for renewing your vehicle registration. At least 45, 45 days prior to the expiration of registration, the owner shall be notified by mail of the date of expiration. Note that non-receipt of this notice does not constitute a defense to failing to register the vehicle on or before the expiration date. There is no grace period for renewing your registration. All registration requirements must be met for any vehicle to be operated upon Kentucky highways and to be used for the driver license road test. For additional information regarding the registration process and related fees, please visit drive.ky.gov. Insurance Law An owner may not operate a vehicle in Kentucky until insurance has been obtained. Also, if your vehicle has a current, active registration, you must maintain insurance on that vehicle. Failure to maintain insurance is a criminal offense, and any owner who fails to maintain insurance on his vehicle shall have his vehicle registration revoked. In addition, the vehicle owner and driver are subject to a fine of $500 to $1,000, up to 90 days in jail, or both. All motor vehicle owners in Kentucky must carry minimum liability coverage. This means liability coverage of $25,000 for all claims for bodily injury damages sustained by any one person and not less than $50,000 for all bodily injury damages sustained by all persons as a result of an accident, as well as $25,000 for all property damage as a result of any one accident. Alternatively, a policy with a single limit of $60,000 is acceptable. Furthermore, the policy must provide basic reparations benefits unless the insured vehicle is a motorcycle. All motor vehicle owners and operators must maintain in the vehicle written proof of minimum liability coverage. Written proof, in the form of an insurance card, can be a paper insurance card or a portable electronic device to download the insurance card. Attending college inside or outside of Kentucky Students can use their home state registration and insurance to drive in Kentucky if they keep a current student identification card from a Kentucky college, university, or technical college. If you or your child are attending a school outside the state of Kentucky, you should check with that state to verify that state's registration and insurance requirements. Active Duty Military Active duty military personnel can use out-of-state insurance to title and register any vehicle in their name here in Kentucky. When registering a vehicle, if it is recorded as a standard personal policy at the county clerk's office rather than a military personnel policy, it will cause the vehicle to be flagged as possibly uninsured. If you are currently on active military duty and receive an uninsured notice letter, Show proof of your active military service, pay stub, ID, to the county clerk's office to resolve the issue. For additional information regarding Kentucky insurance law, please visit drive.ky.gov. Medical Review Board Upon request, the Kentucky State Police will provide reasonable accommodations necessary to afford an individual with a disability an equal opportunity to participate in all testing phases. Additionally, the Kentucky State Police enlists the assistance and advice of the Medical Review Board, which identifies drivers with physical or mental impairments that hamper their ability to operate a motor vehicle safely. The Medical Review Board consists of ophthalmologists, neurologists, psychiatrists, and rehabilitation specialists. Board members provide medical advice to the Division of Driver Licensing on license applicants and licensees reported to the board seizures, blackout, loss of conscience or altered awareness, and driving. A license applicant or licensee must be free of seizures, blackout, loss of conscience, or an altered state of awareness for 90 days to obtain or maintain driving privileges. To report a driver that has experienced a seizure, blackout, loss of conscience, 
or an altered state of awareness, submit an affidavit to the Medical Review Board. Vision Requirements for Driving In Kentucky, visual requirements for driving require an individual to have visual acuity of at least 20 sixtieths or better in at least one eye. The driver's horizontal field of vision must be at least 35 degrees to both the left and the right, and their vertical field of vision must be at least 25 degrees above and below fixation. The Medical Review Board reviews applicants who do not meet the minimum requirements. Some applicants whose visual acuity does not meet the minimum requirements may qualify to participate in a certified driver training program, allowing them to drive with a bioptic telescopic device restriction. The Kentucky Bioptic Driving Program is a certified driver training program that can provide the specialized training necessary to allow applicants to drive with a bioptic telescopic device restriction. The minimum vision requirements for the program are Distance visual acuity of 2200 or better with corrective lenses in the applicant's better eye. Distance visual acuity of 2060 or better using a bioptic telescopic device. A visual field of 120 degrees horizontally and 80 degrees vertically in the better eye. No ocular diagnosis or prognosis that indicates the likelihood of significant deterioration of visual acuity or visual fields to a level below the minimum standards above. This program is administered by the Kentucky Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. Individuals interested in receiving this training can visit the Kentucky Bioptic Driving Program website for additional information or contact the program by phone at 1-800-346-2115. Reporting a driver Drivers may be reported to the Medical Review Board for the following reasons. If the driver has indicated that they have experienced a blackout, a loss of consciousness, or suffered a seizure. If the driver has been reported by a physician, Commonwealth attorney, county attorney, county clerk, circuit clerk, sheriff, or judge as incapable of driving safely due to a physical or mental condition. If the driver's official record indicates the possibility of physical-slash-mental impairment. If the driver has been named in an affidavit to the Medical Review Board by at least two citizens as incapable of properly operating a motor vehicle due to a physical or mental impairment. Drivers may be reported to the Medical Review Board by submitting the Medical Review Board affidavit. Once a case for the driver is created, appropriate medical forms will be sent to the driver to have completed by their physician. After the Medical Review Board has received this information, the individual will be notified of the board's decision by mail. The Kentucky State Police does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, religion, age, or disability. Motor Vehicles and the Environment Motor vehicles are major contributors to ground-level ozone. Ozone pollution contributes to health problems such as chronic lung and heart disease, allergies, and asthma. Younger children, older adults, and people who work or play outside are at the highest risk for health issues related to ground-level ozone. Although today's new vehicles emit fewer pollutants than older vehicles, their emission levels will increase unless they are carefully maintained. As a vehicle ages, its performance and fuel economy diminishes. Vehicle emissions testing programs in major population centers of the state identify vehicles with increased emission levels, alerting the owner to needed maintenance. As vehicles are repaired, vehicle emissions are reduced, and the vehicle owner will usually see improvements in performance and fuel economy. Plan your driving. Allow enough driving time to reach your destination safely. Avoid rush hours and congested areas when possible. Avoid quick starts and stops. Drive smoothly and at moderate speeds. Pace your driving to the traffic and traffic signal timing so you can keep braking and acceleration at a minimum. Drive less and consider other means of travel, driving only when necessary. Combine as many trips as you can. Your vehicle is the safest and most economical when it is parked. Consider carpooling, taking a bus, using a bicycle, or walking. For more information about air pollution, vehicle emission programs, and alternative transportation options visit these websites. Kentucky Division for Air Quality Jefferson County Air Pollution Control District Organ Donation 
If you or a family member needed a kidney or other vital organs to live, would you be able to get a life-saving organ? In Kentucky licensed drivers can sign up as an organ donor when their initial driver's license is issued or when the license is renewed. Information regarding organ donation registration can be found on the Donate Life Kentucky website at https colon slash slash donate Section 3. Be in shape to drive. Driving is one of the riskiest tasks that you will do during your lifetime. Your ability to drive safely depends on good health and making correct decisions. Vision It states Good vision is important for safe driving. If you cannot see clearly, you will have trouble identifying traffic and roadway conditions, spotting potential trouble, and responding to problems in a timely manner. Because seeing well is so important to safe driving, you should have your eyes checked regularly by an eye doctor. If you are required to wear corrective lenses, always wear them when driving. Also, avoid using dark or tinted corrective lenses at night. You need to see out of the corner of your eyes. This lets you spot vehicles creeping up on either side of you while you are looking straight ahead. You must be able to judge distances in addition to seeing clearly. Good distance judgment is important in knowing your location on the roadway in relation to other vehicles and objects, spotting trouble on the roadway, and engaging in defensive driving if you need to. Many people who can see clearly in the daytime have problems seeing at night. Some people cannot make things out in a dim light. Others may have trouble with the glare of oncoming vehicle headlights. Hearing Hearing is more important to driving than many people realize. Your hearing can warn you of danger, the sound of a horn or siren, screeching tires, etc. Sometimes you can hear vehicles that you cannot see. Hearing problems, like bad eyesight, can occur slowly that you do not notice the hearing loss. Drivers who know they are deaf or have hearing problems can adjust by relying more on their visual abilities. Someone with an undiagnosed hearing problem is taking a chance each time they drive. A person may never know about a hearing problem unless the driver has a hearing test periodically. Fatigue Fatigue is physical or mental tiredness that can be caused by physical or mental strain, repetitive tasks, illness, or lack of sleep. Fatigue can affect your vision and increase the time to make decisions. Avoid driving if you are tired or fatigued. You do not want to fall asleep when you are driving. Before a trip, do the following. Get adequate sleep. Most people need 7 to 9 hours to maintain proper alertness during the day. Plan to stop about every 100 miles or 2 hours during long trips. Arrange for a travel companion, someone to watch your driving. Check the labels of your medications and be aware if they cause drowsiness. Do not use alcohol and other drugs when driving. Ways to avoid fatigue. If you start feeling tired, stop driving, and pull off at the next exit or rest area to take a 15 to 20 minute nap or find a place to sleep for the night. Try consuming caffeine before taking a short nap to get the benefits of both. Try not to drive late at night. The best way to avoid fatigue is to get plenty of rest. Driver Distractions The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, describes distracted driving as a specific type of driver inattention that occurs when drivers divert attention from the driving task to focus on some other activity. Many people will associate distracted driving with using a cell phone to complete a number of activities, including calling and texting. However, be aware that distracted driving also includes many other activities such as eating, grooming, adjusting vehicle controls, or even having a conversation with a passenger. Drivers can be uniquely affected by these distractions or combination of distractions, and NHTSA places distractions into one or more of the following categories. Visual distraction, tasks that require the driver to look away from the roadway to visually obtain information. Manual distraction, tasks that require the driver to take one or both hands off the steering wheel to manipulate a control, device, or other non-driving related item. Cognitive distraction, tasks that are defined as the mental workload associated with a task that involves thinking about something other than the driving task. B. 
The American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, AAMVA, adds, although cell phone use is not the only reason for driver distraction, it poses a significant risk to roadway safety. Texting is especially concerning because it combines visual, manual, and cognitive functions. Sending or receiving a text takes a driver's eyes from the road for an average of 4.6 seconds. At 55 miles per hour, this is the equivalent of driving the length of an entire football field, or 100 yards. This data helps to illustrate the danger in texting while driving. According to another study, engaging in visual manual subtasks, such as reaching for a phone, dialing, and texting, associated with the use of handheld phones and other portable devices increased the risk of getting into a crash by three times. Simply put, a distraction is anything that takes your attention away from driving. Distracted driving can cause crashes, resulting in injury, death, or property damage. Taking your eyes off the road or hands off the steering wheel presents obvious driving risks. Mental activities that take your mind away from driving are just as dangerous. When driving, do not talk or text on a cell phone. Avoid arguments and stressful or emotional conversations with passengers. Avoid eating while driving. Be sure children are properly and safely buckled up. Properly secure pets in a pet carrier or portable kennel. Pay attention to the driving task. You are responsible for operating your vehicle safely. Emotions, aggressive driving, and road rage. Emotions can increase your risk by interfering with your ability to think, creating a lack of attention, and interrupting your ability to process information. You may not. Be able to drive well if you are overly worried, excited, afraid, angry, or depressed. There are ways of dealing with your emotions. If you are angry or worried, give yourself time to cool off. If necessary, take a short walk or nap, but stay off the road until the symptoms have passed. Give yourself extra time for your driving trip. Leave a few minutes early, allowing extra time for delays or other unexpected problems. Learn not to become upset when other drivers make a mistake or take advantage of you in certain driving situations. Getting mad can only cause you to make similar mistakes. If you are angry or upset with another person or driver, do not vent your feelings through use of your vehicle. Be calm and careful in the operation of your vehicle. Have someone else drive. Do not drive until you have control of your emotions. Aggressive driving and road rage are not the same thing. Aggressive driving occurs when an individual intentionally commits an action that endangers other persons or property. Aggressive driving includes tailgating, changing lanes abruptly, and speeding. These potentially dangerous behaviors are primarily traffic offenses that could lead to criminal behavior. Road rage is uncontrolled anger that results in violence or threatened violence on the roadway. Road rage is a criminal behavior and is prohibited. Some behaviors typically associated with aggressive driving include speeding, following too closely, unsafe lane changes, improperly signaling, and failing to obey traffic control devices, stop signs, yield signs, traffic signals, and so on. To prevent the occurrence of road rage, drive safely and be courteous to other motorists. Do not tailgate, cut off other motorists in traffic, or engage in other aggressive driving habits. If you should become involved in a road rage incident, do not retaliate or engage in an argument with the enraged driver. Doing so will only worsen the problem. For your safety, you should safely pull off the roadway in a well-lit, public area and call for police assistance. Aging Drivers We all want to keep our ability to drive and go wherever and whenever we want to drive. However, we should be aware of the warning signs that our driving may not be as safe as it once was. Please find warning signs listed below. If more than one of these signs has happened to you or to someone you care about you may wish to have a driving evaluation if a friend or family member has expressed concern about your driving. You sometimes get lost while driving on routes that were once familiar. You have been pulled over by a law enforcement officer and warned about poor driving behavior, regardless of whether you were given a ticket or citation. You have had several moving violations, near misses, 
or actual collisions in the past one to three years. Your doctor or other health caregivers have advised you to restrict or stop driving. To schedule a driving evaluation or to obtain additional information, please contact the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Division of Driver Licensing, Medical Review Board at 502-564-1257 or visit the Transportation Cabinet website drive.ky.gov. Alcohol, Other Drugs, and Driving Alcohol and other impairing drugs are involved in approximately 40% of all traffic crashes in which someone is killed each year. Nationally, thousands of people die each year in alcohol-related collisions. If you drink alcohol or use other impairing drugs and drive, even a little, your chances of being in a crash are much greater than if you did not drink any alcohol or use other drugs. If you are under 21 if you are under the age of 21, it is illegal to purchase, possess, and drink alcoholic beverages. Alcohol and other impairing drugs affect a person's ability to perceive their surroundings, react to emergencies, and skillfully operate a motor vehicle. For new drivers learning complex skills, the effects of alcohol and other impairing drugs is greater. All states have zero-tolerance laws, no alcohol in the circulatory system, or similar laws for drivers under the age of 21. Effects of alcohol and other impairing drugs Alcohol and other impairing drugs reduce your Judgment Judgment is a brain-centered activity that stores all your experiences and knowledge so it can be used quickly when you face a new problem. Vision Blurs your vision, slows your ability to focus, causes double vision, and reduces the ability to judge distance, speed, and the movement of other vehicles. Vision is impacted at 0.02 blood alcohol content, BAC, for all drivers. The most important sense you use in driving is vision. Color distinction reduces your ability to distinguish colors. Reaction time slows your ability to process information and respond to the driving task. The best advice is not to drive a vehicle of any kind if you have consumed alcohol or drugs. Impairment starts with the first drink. Even one drink of alcohol can affect a person's ability to drive. With one or more drinks in the bloodstream, a person is visibly impaired and could be arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. Never let a friend or relative drink and drive. Other Impairing Drugs and Driving Besides alcohol, many other drugs can affect your ability to drive safely. These drugs can have effects like those of alcohol or even worse. This is true of many prescription drugs and even many of the drugs you can buy over the counter without a prescription. Never drink alcohol while you are taking other drugs. These drugs could multiply the effects of alcohol or have additional effects of their own. You cannot drink alcohol or use other impairing drugs and operate a vehicle safely. Over-the-counter drugs Over-the-counter drugs taken for headaches, colds, hay fever, or other allergies or those to calm nerves can make you drowsy and affect your driving. Pep pills, uppers, and diet pills can make you feel nervous, dizzy, and unable to concentrate, and they can affect your vision. Check the label on the product before you take an over-the-counter drug for warnings about its effect. If you are not sure if it is safe to take the drug and drive, ask your doctor or pharmacist about any side effects. Prescription Drugs Some prescription drugs can impact your driving and can affect your reflexes, judgment, vision, and alertness in ways like alcohol. Prescription drugs, such as antidepressants, pain reducers, sleep aids, and sedatives, have an impact on driving safely. Check the label on the prescription and packaging before you take a drug for warnings about its effect. If you are not sure if it is safe to take the drug and drive, ask your doctor or pharmacist about any side effects. Illegal drugs Illegal drugs can impact your driving and can affect your reflexes, judgment, vision, and alertness in ways like alcohol. If you are found guilty of a drug violation while driving and it is your first conviction within a 10, 10 year period, you will be fined not less than $200 nor more than $500 plus court costs, imprisoned in the county jail for not less than 48, 48 hours nor more than 30, 
30 days and your license suspended for 30 to 120 days. For second and subsequent convictions within a 10, 10 year period, the penalties are much worse. Alcohol and the law. In Kentucky, a person shall not operate or be in physical control of a motor vehicle while having an alcohol concentration of 0.08 or above, or while under the influence of alcohol, a controlled substance, or other substance, which impairs driving ability. In other words, you are in violation of the DUI law if you operate a vehicle with an alcohol concentration of 0.08 or above. However, you could still be in violation of the law with an alcohol concentration under 0.08 if there is evidence of impaired driving while under the influence of alcohol or other substances. If you are under the age of 21, 21, you are in violation of the law with an alcohol concentration of 0.02 or more. If you are stopped by a law enforcement officer and suspected of operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol or other substance, the officer may request you to submit to a test of your blood, breath, urine, or any combination of these. Tests These tests are used for the purpose of determining alcohol concentration or the presence of a substance which may impair a person's driving ability, and based on Kentucky's implied consent law, a driver is required to take any test lawfully requested by a law enforcement officer. Kentucky implied consent law is based on the principle that when you operate a vehicle, you have implicitly consented to a lawfully requested test of your blood, breath, urine, or any combination of these tests. Although implied consent laws vary by state, the law applies to the state where you are arrested, not the state where you got your license. If a police officer requests that you submit to a test of your breath, blood, or urine, or any combination of these tests, and you refuse to submit to any requested test, your refusal may result in the suspension of your driver's license by the court and if you are convicted of violating KRS 189A.010, DUI, will result in your license being suspended by the transportation cabinet. If you refuse to submit to the breath, blood, or urine tests, this refusal may be used against you in court as evidence of your violation of KRS 189A.010, DUI. In addition, if you are subsequently convicted of KRS 189A.010 for a second or greater offense within a 10, 10 year period, your refusal of a breath or urine test will be considered an aggravating circumstance and you will be subject to a mandatory minimum jail sentence, which is twice as long as the mandatory minimum jail sentence imposed if you submit to the tests. If you take the test or tests, the results of any test taken may be used against you in court as evidence of violating KRS 189A.010, DUI. If you take the test or tests, you have the right to have a test or tests of your blood performed by a person of your choosing described in KRS 189A.103, a physician, registered nurse, phlebotomist, medical technician, or medical technologist not otherwise prohibited by law, within a reasonable time of your arrest and at your expense. Although your license will be suspended, you may be eligible immediately for an ignition interlock license allowing you to drive during the period of suspension and, if you are convicted of violating KRS 189A.010, DUI, you will receive a credit toward any other ignition interlock requirement arising from this arrest. During the period immediately preceding the administration of any test, you will be afforded an opportunity of at least 10, 10, minutes, but not more than 15, 15, minutes to attempt to contact and communicate with an attorney. Kentucky law states in KRS 189A.010 if you are found guilty of an alcohol violation and it is your first conviction within a 10, 10, year period, you will be fined not less than $200 nor more than $500 plus court costs, imprisoned in the county jail for not less than 48, 48, hours nor more than 30, 30, days, and your license suspended for 4, 4, to 6, 6, months. For a person under the age of 18, 18, the license suspension may be longer. For second and subsequent convictions within a 10, 10, year period, the penalties are much worse. Aggravating Circumstances Mandatory jail time is required when certain aggravating circumstances exist. 
operating a motor vehicle in excess of 30 miles per hour above the posted speed limit. Operating a motor vehicle in the wrong direction on a limited access highway. Operating a motor vehicle that causes a collision resulting in death or serious physical injury. Operating a motor vehicle while the alcohol concentration in the operator's blood or breath is 0.15 BAC or higher within 2, 2, hours of cessation of operation of a motor vehicle. Refusing to take a blood, breath, or urine test requested by a police officer. Operating a motor vehicle while transporting a passenger under the age of 12, 12 years of age. Repeat offenders. Drivers convicted of driving under the influence will forfeit their license plates to the courts during the period in which the driver's license is suspended, unless the person has been issued an ignition interlock license or a hardship license. The court may order an ignition interlock device to be installed on the violator's vehicle. The ignition interlock device prevents a driver from operating that vehicle if the driver's breath alcohol concentration exceeds 0.02. Section 4. Before you drive. Inspecting your vehicle. When it comes to road safety, you can't control other drivers or road conditions, but one thing you can control is proper maintenance of your vehicle and tires. Crashes due to tire maintenance are preventable, and simple steps can save lives. Driving on underinflated or overinflated tires or tires with low tread can lead to safety issues on the road. Check tire pressure with a pressure gauge monthly. Buy a tire pressure gauge if you don't have one already. Open your car door, on the inside jam, you should see. A sticker. Write down or take a picture of the number that says, PSI, the measurement for tire pressure. Remove the cap from the valve stem and use the pressure gauge to check the tire pressure, make sure you check when they are cold. Compare the number on the gauge with the number you wrote down. If the number is too high, let air out of your tires. If the number is too low, inflate your tires until the numbers match. Check tread depth with a penny. Hold a penny with Abraham Lincoln's body between your thumb and forefinger. This section covers Inspecting your vehicle Adjusting seat and mirrors Using safety belts Airbags Child passenger safety laws Secure your load ADAS safety features. Place Lincoln's head first into the deepest looking groove. Can you see all of his head? If yes, your tires are too worn, don't drive on them and make sure to get them replaced. Adjusting seat and mirrors. You should be seated upright with your back against the seat and feet on the floor. Improper seating positions. Such as slouching can result in reduced effectiveness of the vehicle's restraint system. Adjust your seat and mirrors before you start to drive so you can see clearly and have full control of the vehicle's foot pedals and steering wheel with appropriate space for airbag deployment. Your foot should be able to pivot smoothly from brake to accelerator while your heel is kept on the floor. The top of the steering wheel should be no higher than the top of your shoulders and below chin level. There should be 10 inches between your chest and the steering wheel. Do not move the seat so far forward that you cannot easily steer and do not recline the seat. Head restraints are designed to prevent whiplash. Head restraints should be adjusted so the head restraint contacts the back of your head and not below the level of your ears. Adjusting your mirrors. The inside mirror is the primary mirror for view to the rear. Adjust your rear view mirror so that it frames the rear window. You should be able to see traffic flow to the rear of the vehicle with the rear view mirror. A day slash night mirror should be set for the time of day you are driving. Adjust outside mirrors to reduce blind spots and to provide maximum visibility to the side and rear on both sides of the vehicle. You are encouraged to use the following method for adjusting your outside mirrors. To set the left side mirror, the driver must rest his or her head against the closed window and set the mirror to barely show the rear edge of the vehicle. To set the right side mirror, the driver should lean to the right so his or her head is directly below the rear view mirror or above the center console. The mirror should be adjusted the same way as the left side, so that the edge of the right side of your vehicle can barely be seen. 
The driver will not see the left and right sides of the vehicle when glancing in the outside mirrors. However, this adjustment adds 12 to 16 degrees of additional viewing area to each side of the vehicle. Having clean windows and mirrors. It is important that you be able to see clearly through the windows, windshield, and mirrors. Keep the windshield clean because bright sun or headlights on a dirty windshield decreases vision. Keep your windshield washer fluid container full. During winter, this will also help to prevent freezing. Smoking while driving causes a film to build up on the glass inside your vehicle. Clean the inside of your windows frequently, especially if you smoke. Remove snow, ice, and frost from all windows before you start to drive. Do not hang anything from your rearview mirror. Do not clutter up the windshield or rear window with decals. They are unlawful and block your vision. Excessive window tinting is not allowed. Using safety belts. Kentucky law states a person shall not operate a motor vehicle manufactured after 1981 on the public roadways of this state unless the driver and all. Passengers are wearing a properly adjusted and fastened seat belt, unless the passenger is a child who is secured in a child restraint system of type meeting federal motor vehicle safety standards. Always fasten your safety belt and make sure all your passengers are using safety belts or child restraints. Studies have shown that if you are in a crash while using safety belts, your chances of injury or death are greatly reduced. Safety belts keep you from being thrown from the vehicle during a crash or rollover and help you keep control. Your Chances of surviving a crash are five times greater if you stay inside the protection of your vehicle. Safety belts will hold you in the seated position during sudden stops and turns while preventing you from impacting the steering wheel or dashboard during a collision. Your body moves toward the steering wheel or dashboard during a frontal collision. If you are not belted in properly and you are traveling at 55 miles per hour when a collision occurs, your body will impact the steering wheel at the same speed. The odds of you surviving this type of crash without a proper safety belt is small. In Kentucky, it is illegal to drive or to be a passenger without wearing safety belts. Seatbelt law is primary in Kentucky, and drivers can be stopped by law enforcement officers if observed driving while not wearing seat belts. It is important to wear the safety belt correctly. A shoulder harness is worn across the shoulder and chest with minimal, if any, slack. The shoulder harness should not be worn under the arm or behind the back. Wearing the shoulder harness the wrong way could cause serious internal injuries in a crash. The lap belt should be adjusted so that it is snug and lies low across your hips after fastening. Otherwise, in a crash, you could slide out of the belt, resulting in injury or death. Safety belts should be worn even if the vehicle is equipped with airbags. Airbags Airbags are supplemental restraints typically designed to deploy in moderate to severe crashes, and they may even deploy in a minor crash. Airbags are designed to inflate if the sensors detect a severe crash and are designed to work best in combination with safety belts. Safety belts help to properly position your body to maximize the airbag's benefits and help restrain you during the initial and any after crashes. In a crash, airbags and safety belts reduce the chance that your head and upper body will strike some part of the vehicle's interior. It is extremely important that safety belts are always worn, even in airbag-equipped vehicles. The entire airbag deployment process takes about 1-20th of a second, faster than the blink of an eye. The speed of deployment for side-impact airbags is even faster. In the event your airbag deploys, it is common for a powder-like substance to fill the vehicle compartment. This substance is only a drying agent for the airbag but could be mistaken for smoke. Here are some things to remember to avoid serious injury related to airbag deployment. Move the seat back. The driver's seat should be as far back from the steering wheel as possible while still being able to operate the vehicle safely. The passenger seat should be set as far back as possible from the dashboard. Passengers should also avoid placing arms, legs, or any personal items on the dashboard. Drivers should place their hands on the outside of the steering wheel never across the steering wheel where the airbag deploys. 
Children 12 years of age and under should ride in the back seat in a safety belt or child restraint system. Never place a rear-facing child safety seat in front of an active passenger airbag. Turn off the airbag if your vehicle is equipped with the factory-installed disabling switch. Read your vehicle owner's manual for specific information about the airbags in your vehicle. Child Passenger Safety Laws If using a child safety seat, make sure it is installed properly in your vehicle and used correctly. Check to be sure that all children age 12 and younger are properly restrained in the back seat and that a rear, facing child safety seat is never placed in front of an active passenger airbag. Kentucky law requires that any driver of a motor vehicle, when transporting a child of 40, 40, inches in height or less in a motor vehicle operated on the roadways, streets, and highways of this state, shall have the child properly secured in a child restraint system of a type meeting federal motor vehicle safety standards. Any person who violates the provisions of Kentucky's child restraint law shall be fined $50, $50, and shall pay an additional fee of $10, $10, which shall be deposited in the Traumatic Brain Injury Trust Fund. Any driver of a motor vehicle, when transporting a child under the age of 8. 8. Years who is between 40, 40, inches and 57, 57, inches in height in a motor vehicle operated on the roadways, streets, and highways of this state, shall have the child properly secured in a child booster seat. A child of any age who is greater than 57, 57, inches in height shall not be required to be secured in a child booster seat. The safety seat will not provide the maximum protection if not properly installed. The safety seat should ideally be placed in the middle of the rear seat and anchored to prevent any movement in the event of a collision. Assistance with the installation of your child safety seat may be found at a child safety seat inspection site at your local Kentucky State Police post. A child restraint system means any device manufactured to transport children in a motor vehicle which conforms to all applicable federal motor vehicle safety standards. A child booster seat means a child passenger restraint system that meets the standards set forth in 49 CFR Part 571 that is designed to elevate a child to properly sit in a federally approved lap and shoulder belt system. Unattended Children Each year children are injured or tragically die as a result of being left unattended in a vehicle. When you leave a child in the vehicle alone, you risk the child moving the vehicle and causing a collision. When you leave a small child in the vehicle for an extended time during hot weather, you risk the life of that child. In Kentucky, it is illegal to leave a child under the age of 8, 8, years in a motor vehicle under circumstances which manifest an extreme indifference to human life and which create a grave risk of death to the child, thereby causing the death. There are several laws in Kentucky that makes it illegal to endanger the life or health of a child. Secure Your Load Driving with an unsecured load is both against the law and extremely dangerous. Drivers who fail to properly secure their load may face a costly fine and jail time if they cause a crash. A load must be securely fastened and is only considered secure when nothing can slide, shift, fall, or sift onto the roadway or become airborne. To secure your load in your vehicle or trailer, tie it down with rope, netting, or straps. Tie large objects directly to your vehicle or trailer. Consider covering the entire load with a sturdy tarp or netting. Do not overload your vehicle or trailer. Always double-check your load to make sure it is secure. Do not forget that animals should also be properly secured. Before you drive, ask yourself these questions. Is there any chance of debris or cargo falling or blowing out of my vehicle? Is my load secured at the back, sides, and top? What would happen to my load if I had to brake suddenly, I hit a bump, or another vehicle hit me? Would I feel safe if I were driving behind my vehicle? Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, ADAS, Safety Features Many newer vehicles on the road today have driver assistance safety features designed to save lives and prevent injuries, if used properly. Some of the driver assist safety features sense and monitor conditions, identify present and potential dangers, and may help you avoid a potential crash.
These safety features may provide alerts, such as sounds or vibration, or may take control of the vehicle, such as adjusting the braking or steering. Safety features include, but are not limited to blind spot warning, backup camera, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assistance, and active parking assist. When taking your driving test, you will not be allowed to use certain safety features, such as parking assist and cruise control. Safety features are meant to assist you with driving tasks. Not to drive the vehicle. Remain engaged and always focused on the driving task. It is your responsibility to be aware of everything around you by performing head checks and using mirrors and cameras to observe traffic and other roadway users. You are responsible for the safe operation of your vehicle at all times. Do not rely on safety features alone. Follow these important tips when driving vehicles with safety features. It is your responsibility to always stay focused when driving. Read your vehicle owner's manual to learn how your vehicle's safety features operate. Know the limitations of your vehicle's safety features. Be aware that safety features may not work properly in certain conditions such as rain, snow, ice, fog, hills, and curves. Always keep vehicle sensors clean and damage-free. Always keep software technology up to date and follow your vehicle manufacturer's recommendations. ADAS safety features provide many benefits and have great potential to assist drivers in reducing crashes, injuries, and fatalities when used properly. Click the links below for additional information. https colon slash slash mycardoswat.org is rain, snow, ice, fog, hills, and curves. Traffic Safety Education Foundation https colon slash slash www.nhtsa.gov Section 5 Basic Driving Starting the Engine Check the vehicle owner's manual for how to start the vehicle. To start the engine, place your right foot on the brake pedal and check the gear. Select or lever for park. Place the key in the ignition and turn the ignition switch to the on position. Check indicator lights and gauges, fuel level, ABS, airbags, and so on. Moving the vehicle. Move gear selector lever to D, drive, while keeping your foot on the brake pedal. Check forward for a safe path and check for traffic to the sides and behind. Signal and if safe, move your foot to the accelerator and press gently. Accelerate gradually and smoothly with the top of your foot on the pedal and the heel of your foot on the floor. Stopping the vehicle. Check your mirrors for traffic to the rear of your vehicle. Move your foot from the accelerator to the brake pedal. Press with steady pressure until your vehicle comes to a stop. Steering. The steering wheel is always turned in the direction you want the vehicle to move, whether moving forward or in reverse. Hand position. Placing your hands at the 2 and 10 o'clock positions is no longer recommended because it can be dangerous in a vehicle equipped with airbags. Instead, both hands. This section covers Starting the engine Moving the vehicle Stopping the vehicle Steering Backing up Should be placed on the outside of the steering wheel on opposite sides, at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions, to maintain control of the vehicle. Your grip on the steering wheel should be firm but gentle. Use your fingers instead of the palms of your hands and keep your thumbs up along the face of the steering wheel. Never turn the wheel while gripping it from the inside of the steering wheel. Backing up. To safely back up your vehicle, you should Check behind your vehicle before you get in. Children and small objects cannot be seen from the driver's seat. Place your foot on the brake and shift to reverse. Grasp the steering wheel at the 12 o'clock position with your left hand. Place your right arm on the back of the seat and look directly through the rear window. Use your mirrors for backing up, but keep in mind that these mirrors do not show the area immediately behind your vehicle. Accelerate gently and smoothly, keeping your speed slow. Your vehicle is much harder to steer while you are backing up. Steer slightly in the direction the rear of the vehicle should move. 
If backing up while turning, make quick checks to the front and sides. Continue looking to the rear until coming to a complete stop. Section 6. Rules of the Road. Yielding Right-of-Way. Yielding right-of-way rules provide drivers with guidance for situations when other drivers or pedestrians are present. These rules determine which driver should yield the right-of-way and the sequence for entering and driving through an intersection or other driving scenarios. Although yielding right-of-way rules provide a guide to determine who should yield the right-of-way, no one should assume he or she automatically has the right-of-way. The situation and circumstances at the intersection must always be considered. You should yield the right-of-way to The driver who is at or arrives before you at the intersection Drivers in the opposing traffic lane when you are making a left turn This includes vehicles turning right The driver on your right at a four-way intersection, controlled by stop signs if both of you arrive at the intersection at the same time Drivers on a public highway if you are entering the highway from a driveway or a private road Drivers on a minor road must yield to drivers on a main road. This section covers Yielding right-of-way Traffic control devices Traffic signs Pavement markings Other lane controls Drivers already on a limited access or interstate highway if you are on the entrance or acceleration ramp, and Pedestrians, bicyclists, and other drivers who are still in the intersection. Traffic control devices. Traffic control devices include traffic signals, signs, pavement markings, and directions provided by law enforcement, highway personnel, and school crossing guards. Upon approaching an intersection where a police officer is directing traffic, do what the officer instructs you to do regardless of traffic control devices or signs. An intersection is any place where two roads meet. At an intersection, there may be traffic signals, signs, or right-of-way rules to control traffic. Traffic signals Traffic signals are lights that tell you when or where you should stop and go. Traffic lights are usually at intersections and are red, yellow, and green from top to bottom when on the same signal. There are some intersections and other locations where there are single green, yellow, or red lights. In some metropolitan areas, traffic lights are horizontal, instead of vertical, and the red light is on the left, the yellow light is in the middle, and the green light is on the right. Green traffic light, if the roadway is clear, after yielding the right-of-way to other vehicles and pedestrians lawfully within the intersection. You may go straight or turn left or turn right, unless such turns are prohibited. Left turns on a green light must yield to through traffic coming from the opposite direction. Yellow traffic light, a yellow light, means the traffic signal is about to turn red. Stop if you can do so safely. A vehicle may clear an intersection on a red light if the vehicle entered the intersection while the signal was yellow, but it is against the law to enter an intersection after the light turns red. Red traffic light, a red light means stop behind a crosswalk or stop line until the green light appears. You may turn right after stopping if there is no approaching traffic unless a sign is posted prohibiting such right turns. Even though the light is red, a turn is permitted from a one-way street into the nearest lane of another one-way street running in the direction of that turn. Right turns on red, if not prohibited by signs, and you are in the proper lane, you must first stop and then turn right when the roadway is clear of vehicle or pedestrian traffic. Left turns on red, left turns on red, are permitted only when turning from a one-way street onto a one-way street. You must first stop, then turn left when the roadway is clear of vehicle or pedestrian traffic. Flashing lights A flashing yellow light means you must slow down and watch for others. It is found at intersections, construction areas, and on some vehicles, like tow trucks. A flashing red light means you must come to a full stop and proceed only when it is clear. Two flashing red lights mark a railroad crossing. Stop and proceed only after the red lights stop flashing and you determine no train is approaching. The familiar crossbuck sign near the tracks is a regulatory sign that means the same as a yield sign. Lighted arrows 
some intersections have lighted arrows in addition to the regular lights. A green arrow means you may go in the direction of the arrow, if you are in the proper lane. A flashing yellow arrow means proceed with caution in the direction of the arrow. A green arrow pointed upward means you may go straight ahead. A red arrow means no turning in the direction of the arrow until it turns green. When there is more than one traffic light, obey the one that is over your lane. Traffic Signs Traffic signs tell you about traffic rules, hazards, roadway location, roadway directions, and the location of roadway services. The shape, color, symbols, and words of these signs give clues to the type of information they provide. Warning signs, these signs tell a driver of possible danger that might be ahead, and alert the driver to slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. Warning signs may also alert the driver to a hazard or special situation on the roadway that is ahead. These signs are usually yellow with black lettering or symbols and are diamond-shaped. Some warning signs may be fluorescent yellow, such as school zones, school crossing, and pedestrian crossing. Some common warning signs are shown below. Railroad Crossing Warning Signs Many railroad crossings have signs or signals to caution you about highway railroad grade crossings. Some common railroad crossing warning signs and signals are shown below. A round yellow warning sign with an X symbol and black RR letters is placed along the road before a highway railroad grade crossing. The sign cautions you to slow down, look and listen for a train or railroad vehicle, and be prepared to stop if a train is approaching. A white, X-shaped sign with railroad crossing printed on it is located at the highway railroad grade crossing. When a train or railroad vehicle is approaching the intersection, you must stop behind the stop line or before the intersection until the intersection is clear. At highway railroad grade crossings with more than one train track, the number of tracks will be posted. These Signs warn you that there is more than one track and there may be more than one train crossing. Not all highway railroad grade crossings with more than one train track will have these signs, so it is important to check for more than one track, train, or railroad vehicle at each highway railroad grade crossing. Not all railroad grade crossings have lights. When you need to cross railroad tracks, look both ways and cross the tracks quickly, without stopping. If a train is crossing the highway, you must wait to cross a highway railroad grade crossing until the train is well down the track or railroad devices, such as lights and gates, indicated as safe to cross. If you are approaching railroad tracks and you need to stop for traffic or a signal, stop at the stop line before the railroad tracks. If you do get boxed in or stalled on a railroad crossing, abandon your car immediately and run away from the railroad track in the direction the train is coming, in order to avoid being hit by flying debris. Once you are at a safe distance, call the 800 number posted on or near the crossbuck, or call 911, to alert the dispatcher of your stalled vehicle. Do not attempt to restart your vehicle until a dispatcher indicates it is safe and no trains are approaching. The stopping distance for an average freight train at 55 miles per hour may be a mile or more. Trains cannot stop quickly, cars can. If you are stopped at a railroad crossing where there is more than one track, do not start up as soon as the train passes. Wait until you have a clear view in both directions before you start across. A second train could be approaching from the other direction. Never attempt to cross a railroad crossing until there is ample space to get completely across and off the tracks. Stopping on a railroad crossing is very dangerous. Expect a train when approaching any railroad track. Crossing a railroad track after the warning lights are flashing or the crossing gates are down is against the law, and you could be cited. Work zone signs, these are generally diamond or rectangular shaped and orange with black letters or symbols. These construction, maintenance, or emergency operation signs alert you to work zones ahead and warn you that people are working on or near the roadway. These warnings include workers ahead, reduced speed, detours, slow-moving construction equipment, and poor or suddenly changing road surfaces. In work zones, traffic may be controlled by a person with a sign or flag to tell you which direction to travel or to slow down or stop. 
you must follow their instructions. Barriers, such as drums, cones, and tubes, panels, are used to keep traffic out of hazardous work zones. Along with signs and road markings, they guide you safely through the work zone. Barriers may be used to keep drivers from entering closed roads or other areas where it is dangerous to drive. Temporary traffic signals may be used in work zones. You may see a warning sign showing a symbol of a traffic signal. Stop at the white line, if present. Road closed. Give construction workers a break. Reduce your speed in work zones and be prepared to stop suddenly. Do not tailgate in work zones. Fines for speeding in a work zone are doubled. Regulatory signs. These signs are square or rectangular or have a special shape and are white with black, red, or green letters or symbols. These signs tell you about specific laws that you must obey, such as rules for traffic direction, lane use, turning, speed, parking, and other special situations. Some regulatory signs have a red circle with a red slash over a symbol, which prohibits certain actions. Common types of regulatory signs are Speed limit signs. These black and white signs indicate the maximum legal speed allowed in ideal conditions. Stop sign. A stop sign has eight sides and is red with white letters. You must stop behind the stop line or crosswalk if one is present. Yield the right of way to crossing vehicles and pedestrians in all directions. Yield sign. A yield sign is a red and white downward pointing triangle with red letters. It means you must slow down and allow traffic that has the right of way to cross before entering. Shared center lane left turn only, this sign tells you where a lane is reserved for the use of left turning vehicles from either direction and is not to be used for through traffic or passing other vehicles. One way street, these signs tell you that traffic flows only in the direction of the arrow. Do not turn in the opposite direction of the arrow. Wrong way, this sign tells that you are going in the wrong direction. It is often found at exit ramps and at the beginning of one-way streets. Do not enter. This sign tells you that you cannot enter a street or roadway. It is often found at exit ramps and at the beginning of one-way streets. Guide signs. These signs are square and rectangular and are green, brown, or blue. They give information on intersecting roads, help direct you to cities and towns, and show points of interest along the highway. Guide signs can also help you find hospitals, service stations, restaurants, and hotels. Route number signs. The shape and color of route number signs indicate the type of roadway, interstate, U.S., state, city, county, or local road. When planning a trip, use a road map to determine the route. During the trip, follow the route signs to prevent you from getting lost in an unfamiliar area. Pavement markings. Pavement markings are lines, arrows, words, or symbols painted on the roadway to give you directions or warnings. They are used to divide lanes, tell you when you may pass other vehicles or change lanes, tell you which lanes to use for turns, define pedestrian walkways, and show where you must stop for signs or traffic signals. Yellow lane markings. White lane markings. Crosswalks and stop lines. Crosswalks define the area where pedestrians may cross the roadway. When required to stop because of a sign or signal, you must stop behind the stop line, crosswalk, or stop sign or signal. You must yield to pedestrians entering or in a crosswalk. Not all crosswalks are marked. Be alert for pedestrians when crossing intersections. If crosswalks are not apparent, then you must stop before entering the intersection. If there is a stop line before the crosswalk, the stop line must be obeyed first. The following are some of the most common types of crosswalk markings. Other lane controls. Shared center, left turn lane, and reversible lanes. Regulatory signs. Standard colors. Red. Stop or forbidden. Green. Indicates movement permitted, directional guidance. Yellow. General warning. Warning signs. Standard shapes. 
horizontal rectangle, equilateral triangle, vertical rectangle, diamond, pentagon, round, generally guide signs, used only for yield signs, generally regulating signs, existing or possible hazards on roadway, school signs, railroad and advance warning, Section 7. General Driving. Turning and Turnabouts. When turning, you should search all corners for traffic controls, pedestrians, other vehicles, and so on, and signal your intentions. Enter and maintain proper position in the lane that is closest to the direction you want to go. Look through the turn to the farthest point possible along the intended path. Accelerate smoothly to an appropriate speed, make sure your turn signal is cancelled, and check traffic to the rear. If you plan to turn at an intersection, signal 100 feet before the turn. If the driver in front of you is signaling for a turn, do not signal unless you are also going to turn. Right turns. Avoid swinging wide to the left before making the turn. Always turn right from the rightmost portion of your lane. Left turns. When making a left turn, yield to oncoming traffic. Always turn left from the leftmost portion of your lane. Multiple lanes turning. Identify and enter the lane from which you will turn. Stay in that lane until the turn is completed. Turnabouts A turnabout is a type of turn in which a street, alley, or driveway is used to legally reverse the direction you are traveling when it is not practical or possible to drive around a block. When you need to turn around and go the other direction, a turnabout is a safe and legal way to do it. Make sure your car can be seen for 500 feet in either direction. Signal your intention to turn right, stop and check traffic to the sides and rear of the vehicle. Move back until the rear bumper of the vehicle reaches the near edge of the driveway. While backing slowly, steer rapidly all the way to the right. As the vehicle centers in the driveway, figure 1, straighten the wheels, and stop. If backing onto a two-lane road, do not center the vehicle in the roadway. Instead, position the vehicle to the right of the center line, figure 2, or stay on your side of the roadway if there is no center line. Shift to drive and check in both directions, if clear, signal and turn left into the proper lane and accelerate as appropriate. Figure 1 Driveway Figure 2 Two-Lane Road Applicants should master this maneuver in preparation for the skills test. Intersections At all intersections, reduce your speed and search for Traffic control devices Oncoming and cross-traffic Pedestrians and bicyclists The roadway condition Areas of limited visibility do not rely on others to obey traffic control signals or signs. They may not yield the right of way. Be prepared to avoid a crash. Before moving after stopping at an intersection, take the extra time to check for crossing traffic and bicyclists. Look left and then right and left again before entering the intersection. At a traffic signal when the light turns green, avoid immediately moving into the intersection. Take the time to make sure your path of travel is clear and there is no crossing traffic. You need a large enough gap to get your vehicle across the roadway. You need enough space to turn into the appropriate lane and get up to speed. At an intersection, look both ways, even if other traffic has a red light or a stop sign. Someone may disobey traffic control devices. Make sure you have a good view. If your view of a cross street is blocked by a building or a row of parked vehicles, edge forward slowly until you can clearly see. If traffic in one lane is blocking your view of another lane, wait until it clears. If you try to look by placing the front of your vehicle into the other lane, you may get hit. Never assume another driver will share space or give your vehicle any additional space. Do not turn into a lane just because an approaching vehicle has a turn signal active. The driver with an active turn signal may plan to turn after they go past your vehicle or may have forgotten to turn the signal off from a prior turn. Roundabouts and Traffic Circles 
A roundabout or traffic circle is a circular intersection with design features that promote safe and efficient traffic flow. Vehicles travel counterclockwise around a raised center island, with entering traffic yielding the right of way to circulating traffic. When using roundabouts or traffic circles, slow down to enter the roundabout or traffic circle. A sign, like the one shown, warns of a roundabout or traffic circle. Yield to the traffic in the roundabout slash circle. Enter a roundabout or traffic circle in a counterclockwise direction. Proceed to the appropriate exit, signal intent, and exit. Rules for school buses. Where there are school buses, there are usually children. Children are likely to do something unexpected, so be prepared. When you come to a school or church bus that is stopped on any roadway to load or unload passengers you must stop. By law, you must remain stopped until all people are clear of the roadway and the bus is in motion. A stop is not required when approaching a stopped bus from the opposite direction upon a highway of four or more lanes. However, a stop is required when following a bus that is stopped on a two-lane road or you are going in the opposite direction of the bus on a highway that has less than four lanes, as they are generally not divided. Do not attempt to pass any school or church bus when the bus is stopped upon a highway to receive or discharge passengers, with the stop arm and signal lights are activated. The operator of a vehicle approaching a school or church bus from any direction must bring the vehicle to a complete stop and cannot proceed until the bus has completed receiving or discharging passengers and the bus is in motion. This requirement applies to all vehicles approaching a school or church bus. Parking You are responsible for making sure that your vehicle is not a hazard when it is parked. Always park in a designated area. When parking along the roadway, park your vehicle as far away from the flow of traffic as possible. If there is a curb, park as close to it as possible. No parking zones, there are many areas where you cannot park. Check for signs or painted curbs that may prohibit or limit parking. Some parking. Restrictions are indicated by colored curb markings. Perpendicular and angle parking. Entering a perpendicular or angle parking space. Identify the space in which you will park and check traffic. Signal your intentions. Move forward slowly, turning the steering wheel left or right as appropriate until the vehicle reaches the middle of the space. Center the vehicle in the space. Move to the front of the parking space, stop, and secure the vehicle. Exiting a perpendicular or angle parking space. Check for traffic in all directions. Continue to check traffic and move straight back until your front bumper clears the vehicle parked beside you. Then turn the steering wheel sharply in the direction that the rear of your vehicle should move. When the vehicle clears the parking area space, stop and shift to drive. Accelerate smoothly, steering as needed to straighten the wheels. Parallel parking. Entering a parallel parking space. Identify the space where you will park, check traffic, and signal. When traffic is clear, shift to reverse and look to the rear in the direction the vehicle will be moving. Back slowly while turning the steering wheel rapidly in the appropriate direction. Continue backing up until your front bumper is in line with the rear bumper of the vehicle you are parking behind. Back up slowly while turning the steering wheel rapidly to center the vehicle into the space. Stop before touching the bumper of the vehicle to the rear. Shift to drive and adjust the vehicle in the parking space. Make sure your vehicle cannot move. Set your parking brake and shift to park or reverse in a manual shift car. It is safest to get out of your vehicle on the curbside. If you must use the street side, check traffic before getting out. The law requires you to turn off the engine and remove the key when you leave a vehicle. Always lock your vehicle when leaving it, even if you are only going to be away for a short period of time. Exiting a parallel parking space. Check traffic in all directions, place your foot on the brake, shift to reverse, and back as much as possible to the vehicle parked behind you. Check for traffic and signal. Shift to drive and move forward, slowly, steering into the lane. Make sure that the front bumper of the vehicle will clear the vehicle ahead, if not, reverse and correct steering. 
Move forward into the appropriate lane of traffic when the door post of the vehicle clears the rear bumper of the vehicle parked ahead of you. Applicants should master this maneuver in preparation for the skills test. Parking on a hill If you are parked on a hill, turn your wheels so that your vehicle will touch the curb if the vehicle begins moving. If there is no curb, turn the wheels so the vehicle will go off the road should it roll. Turn off the engine and remove the key when you leave a vehicle. Always lock your vehicle when leaving it, even if you are only going to be away for a short period of time. Handicapped Parking Unauthorized parking in designated handicapped parking areas is unlawful and is punishable by a fine. Persons requiring or needing handicapped parking privileges should apply to the county clerk's office for special decals or plates. Handicapped parking is only for vehicles displaying an official permit and transporting a disabled person. Use of lanes Smooth driving allows you to keep more distance between yourself and other drivers and helps improve fuel economy. If there are three or more lanes in one direction, the middle lane or lanes are for through traffic. The left lane is for drivers who want to pass or turn left. The right lane is used by drivers who want to go slower or who are entering or turning right. If a road has only two lanes in one direction, the right lane generally has the smoothest traffic flow, with the left lane being reserved for the passing of other vehicles. Remaining in the left lane on a limited access highway is illegal. Lanes for turning While turning into another street, turn into the lane nearest to you. If you are turning left from a street with two or more lanes, turn from the lane nearest the center lane. If you are turning right, turn from the lane nearest the curb. If you need to change to another lane, do so only after you have finished your turn and when the traffic is clear. If you miss your turn, go on to the next intersection and work your way back to where you want to go. If you have already started through an intersection when the light changes, keep going. If you have started to make a turn, follow through. Last-second changes can cause collisions. Changing lanes When changing lanes, check your mirrors. Check your blind spots or areas around your vehicle that cannot be seen by other vehicles by turning your head and looking over your shoulder in the direction you plan to move. Identify a gap in traffic, signal, and look again in the direction of the lane change. Adjust speed and steer into lane. Entering a multi-lane highway. Use the acceleration lane to reach the speed of other vehicles before pulling onto the roadway. Identify a gap in traffic and merge with the traffic flow. Cancel your turn signal. The existing traffic has the right of way, so make sure it is clear before you merge. Exiting a roadway. It is important to know where you are exiting the roadway. Get in the lane closest to your exiting point early to avoid a quick lane change. Maintain your vehicle speed as long as you are on the main roadway. Signal your intention, move to the deceleration lane, and slow to your existing speed. Check the posted speed for the deceleration lane. Passing In general, you should pass on the left. On multi-lane roads, the leftmost lane is intended to be used for passing slower vehicles. Passing on the right can be dangerous since other drivers do not expect it. Vehicles on the right side are also more difficult to see. The operator of a vehicle may overtake and pass another vehicle upon the right only when it is safe to do so. Such movement shall not be made by driving off the roadway unless the vehicle being passed comes to a complete stop and such movement may be made safely. Many roads have lane markings that tell you when passing is legal or illegal. You may not pass when there is a solid line on your side of the broken line of the road. You may pass if there is a solid yellow line on the left side of the broken yellow line. Pass only if there are no oncoming vehicles. Signs are also used to tell you when passing is legal or illegal. Kentucky law requires that a pass be completed before reaching the beginning of a no-passing zone, and that a pass be completed before coming within 200. 200 feet of an oncoming vehicle. If you are still in the left lane when you reach the no-passing zone, you are violating the law. When passing another vehicle, pass the vehicle as quickly and safely as possible.
The longer your vehicle stays alongside the other vehicle, the longer you are in danger of the other vehicle moving towards your lane. To pass. Check for oncoming traffic. Check your mirrors and over your shoulder for following or passing vehicles. Signal your intentions when it is safe to pass. Steer smoothly into the passing lane, maintain or adjust speed as necessary. Continue to pass until the complete front of the passed vehicle is visible in your rearview mirror. Signal your intention to return to the lane. Steer smoothly into the lane, maintaining or adjusting speed as appropriate. Consider whether or not you have enough space to pass whenever you approach a hill or curve, an intersection, or any roadway obstruction. Anytime your view is blocked by a curve or a hill, you should assume there is an oncoming vehicle just out of sight. Treat a curve or a hill as an oncoming vehicle. Do not start to pass when approaching a hill or a curve. It is dangerous to pass where someone may enter or cross the road. Such places include crossroads and congested areas, business and shopping areas, school zones, parks, playgrounds, and pedestrian crossings. While you are passing, your view of people and traffic may be blocked by the vehicle you are passing. Also, other drivers turning onto the roadway into the left lane may not expect to find you in the left lane. Before you pass, look ahead for road or other conditions that may cause other traffic to move into your lane. Make sure someone is not going to pull in front of you from a private drive or intersection. Never pull out to pass unless you know you have enough space to return to your lane. Do not depend on having enough time to pass several vehicles at once or rely on other drivers to make room for you. Before you return to the driving lane, B. Sure to leave enough room between you and the vehicle you have passed. One way to do this is to look for the vehicle in the outside rearview mirror. When you see the vehicle, you have enough room to return to the driving lane. Overtaking a bicycle or electric low-speed scooter proceeding in the same direction. If there is more than one, one, lane for traffic traveling in the same direction, move the vehicle to the immediate left, if the lane is available and moving in the lane is reasonably safe, or if there is only one, one, lane for traffic traveling in the same direction, pass to the left keeping at least three, three, feet between your vehicle and the bicycle or electric low-speed scooter. Maintain that distance until safely past the bicycle or electric low-speed scooter. Use reasonable caution in passing if space on the roadway is not available to have a minimum distance of three, three, feet between your vehicle and the bicycle or electric low-speed scooter. You may drive to the left of the center line, including when there is a no-passing zone, to pass a person operating a bicycle or electric low-speed scooter only if the roadway to the left of the center is clear for a sufficient distance to permit passing the person safely and avoid interference with oncoming traffic. When being passed, stay in your lane. Kentucky law requires the operator of a vehicle about to be overtaken and passed shall give way to the right in favor of the overtaking vehicle. Road users are required to work together in order to obtain clearance and avoid accidents in passing situations. Section 8. Safe Driving Tips Driving requires skills you can only gain through practice and experience. The following section offers some driving tips that you can practice helping you become a safer and more skillful driver. Visual Search You must know what is happening around your vehicle. You must look ahead, to the sides, and behind the vehicle. You should develop a searching pattern that you can use every time you are driving. Searching helps you to see situations that could cause a problem and gives you time to change speed or roadway position. Avoid staring. Keep your eyes moving and searching for possible problems. Look ahead. Looking well down your planned path of travel will help you see the road, other road users, and traffic conditions, and gives you time to adjust and plan your driving movements. This additional time will allow you to make better decisions and possibly avoid being forced to use emergency braking and steering. Ideally, you should try to look at what is occurring 20 to 30 seconds in front of your car. How far you look down the road depends on where you are driving. In cities and urban areas, you may not be able to see as far as when you are driving on a highway. 
Avoid getting into situations that could limit how far you can see such as following too close to a larger vehicle. Adjust your speed and road position so you can see. This section covers Visual search Speed management Stopping distance Space management Backing Communicating Look to the sides you should search to the sides to make sure other roadway users will not cross your travel path. Look to the rear. You need to be aware of traffic behind your vehicle. Use your mirrors to check this traffic. It is very important to check traffic behind you when changing lanes, slowing down or stopping, and entering an intersection. Speed management. Driving safely means adjusting your vehicle speed for roadway and traffic conditions providing an adequate following interval, and obeying the appropriate speed limits. Make it a habit to glance at the speedometer about once a minute to ensure you are driving at a safe and legal speed. Kentucky Speed Limits When the speed limit is not posted, these are the speed limits on Kentucky roads. 65 miles per hour, 65 miles per hour is the speed limit on interstate highways and parkways. 55 miles per hour 55 miles per hour is the speed limit on all other state highways. 35 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour is the speed limit in a business slash residential district. 15 miles per hour, the speed limit in an off-street parking facility offered for public use, whether publicly or privately owned, shall be 15 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour, the Secretary of Transportation may increase the speed limit of specific highways to 70 miles per hour. Visibility Speed must be adjusted according to how well you can see the roadway. A few things that may inhibit you from seeing well are Darkness, you must be closer to an object to see it at night than during the day. Never drive so fast that you cannot stop within the distance you can see with your headlights. Rain, fog, or snow. In a heavy rain, snowstorm, or a thick fog, you may not be able to see more than 100 feet ahead. When you cannot see any farther than that, you cannot safely drive faster than 25 miles per hour. You should also use low beam headlights. Intersections, trees, bushes, parked cars, signs, and buildings at intersections can block you view of vehicles coming from the side. Approach these areas with caution and slowly enough to be able to stop if a vehicle pulls out suddenly. Hills and curves. When you come to a hill or curve, adjust your speed so you can stop if a stalled car or slow-moving vehicle is in your lane. Adjusting to roadway conditions curves always. Reduce speed before. Entering the curve to a safe speed, a speed that allows you to apply slight and constant acceleration through the curve. Reduce speed more when traction is poor, when following other vehicles, and when you cannot see the end of the curve. Hard braking after entry to a curve could cause the vehicle tires to lose traction. Slippery roads, reduce speed at the first sign of rain, snow, sleet, or ice. When the roadway is slippery, your tires do not grip as well. It will take longer to stop, and it will be harder to turn without skidding. If you are driving at an excessive speed or going downhill, slippery conditions can cause the vehicle to skid or to hydroplane. Do not try to stop rapidly or turn quickly until your speed has slowed and your tires have regained traction with the roadway. Pump your brakes gently, unless your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes, in which case you should apply steady pressure to the brakes. Always reduce your speed if the road is wet or covered with snow or ice. Hydroplaning. Hydroplaning occurs when the steering tires start to ride up on any pooled water, similar to the action of water skis. The tires are not contacting the actual roadway surface. The best way to avoid traction loss from hydroplaning is to slow down in the rain or when the road is wet with pooled water or water puddles. It is also helpful to drive with properly inflated tires with good tire tread. Flooded roadways, do not drive through large bodies of standing water on a road. If you see a flooded roadway, find another route to get to your destination. Stopping distance. Total stopping distance is the distance your vehicle travels, in ideal conditions, from the time you realize you must stop until your vehicle stops. Several things may affect your stopping distance. 
speed, the faster you are traveling, the more time and distance is needed to stop. Your perception time, this is the time and distance it takes you to recognize you must stop. The average perception time for an alert driver is 3 quarters second to 1 second. Your reaction time, this is the time and distance it takes for you to react and move your foot from the gas pedal and begin applying the brakes. The average driver has a reaction time of 3 quarters second to 1 second. Braking distance, this is the time and distance it takes for your brakes to slow and stop your vehicle. At 50 miles per hour on dry pavement with good brakes, it can take about 158 feet. Space management. Providing adequate following distance. You will share the road with a variety of other roadway users. You will need time and space to adjust and react to these other road users. The more space you allow between your vehicle and other roadway users, the more time you have to react. This space is usually referred to as a space cushion. Always try to maintain a safe space cushion around your vehicle. Space in front. Rear end crashes are more common than any other kind. Many drivers follow too closely, and when the vehicle ahead stops, they cannot react in time. Following the vehicle in front of you closely limits your vision of the road and does not allow you enough time to react to avoid a crash. You should always try to keep a minimum following distance of 4 seconds between your car and the vehicle in front. It is against the law to follow another vehicle more closely than is reasonable and prudent. To determine your following distance. Watch when the rear of the vehicle ahead passes a sign, pole, or any other stationary point. Count the seconds it takes you to reach the same sign, pole, or stationary point, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. You are following too closely if you pass the stationary point before counting to 1004. Reduce speed and then count again at another stationary point to check the new following interval. Repeat until you are following no closer than 4 seconds. After practicing, guess how many seconds away you are from an object and count the seconds it takes to reach the object to see how accurate you are. For second minimum following distance. There are certain situations when you would need more space in front of your vehicle. Increase your following distance. On slippery roads. When following large vehicles such as trucks, buses, recreational vehicles, and vehicles pulling a trailer. At night, in fog, or in bad weather. When following vehicles required to stop at railroad crossings, such as transit buses, school buses, or vehicles carrying hazardous materials. Following motorcycles. Motorcyclists can turn and change lanes much quicker than other vehicles. Allow extra space to react to motorcycles. When a driver behind you wants to pass, ease up on the accelerator to assist. You may have to slow down to allow enough space in front for the driver to move in front of you. Space to the side. A space cushion on the sides of your vehicle allows you to move right or left. Try to keep your vehicle where it can be seen. You cannot always be sure other drivers will see you, but you can avoid putting your vehicle where they cannot see it. Try to avoid driving on either side slightly to the rear of another vehicle. You may be in their blind spot, and it reduces the space you may need to avoid a crash. Either speed up or drop back, but do not remain in another driver's blind spot. Avoid crowding the center line marking. Try to keep as much space as possible between you and oncoming traffic. Make space for vehicles entering a multiple lane or limited access roadway by moving over a lane or adjusting your speed. Give extra space to pedestrians, especially children and bicyclists. When a passing vehicle is a tractor trailer, leave a little more space between you and that vehicle by moving to the outside portion of your lane. Keep away from the tractor trailer as it passes. Keep a space between yourself and parked vehicles. Someone may step out of a vehicle or from between the parked vehicles, or a vehicle may start to pull out suddenly. Especially use caution when traveling interstate highways, because there may be parked vehicles on the shoulder of the highway.
when approaching these vehicles, move to the left lane safely before passing them and then back to the right lane after passing. Space behind affects your following distance. It is not always easy to maintain a safe following distance behind your vehicle. However, you can help keep the driver, behind you, at a safe distance by keeping a steady speed, signaling in advance, and keeping more space to the front of your vehicle before reducing speed or turning. If someone is following too closely or coming up behind you too fast, you will have more time to react accordingly. Allowing a space cushion for defensive driving. If another driver makes a mistake, do what you can to help the driver out. You may need to speed up, slow down, change lanes, or even stop. Do whatever the situation demands if a collision is avoided. Backing Backing requires extra caution because it is difficult to see behind your vehicle. Here are some additional backing safety tips. Whenever possible, avoid backing into traffic, or, if possible, use a person outside the car to help you back. If you have passed your exit on an interstate or freeway, never back up or try to turn around. Proceed to the next exit and work your way back to where you want to go. Communicating It is important to let other roadway users know where you are and what you plan to do. Letting others know you are there it is your responsibility to make sure your vehicle is visible to other roadway users. Use headlights. Headlights must be illuminated during the period from one half, one half, hour after sunset to one half, one half, hour before sunrise. Turning on your headlights helps other roadway users to see you. Especially on rainy, snowy, or foggy days. When it begins to get dark. When driving away from a rising or setting sun. Turn your headlights on whenever you have trouble seeing other vehicles. If you have trouble seeing them, chances are they are having trouble seeing you. Using your horn, your vehicle's horn, if used properly, can be used to get the attention of other road users. A light tap on the horn should be all that is needed under normal circumstances. You may want to give your horn a light tap when Pedestrians or bicyclists appear to be moving into your lane of travel. Passing a driver who starts to turn into your lane. A driver is not paying attention or may have trouble seeing you. Not using your horn, you should only use your horn when you need to communicate with other road users. Using your horn inappropriately could scare or anger another road user. You should not use your horn when near blind pedestrians. Signaling your movements. You must use the appropriate turn signal before changing direction or slowing the vehicle to inform and warn other roadway users. Signal before changing direction, an appropriate signal gives other roadway users time to react to your vehicle movements. You should use a turn signal when changing lanes or passing another vehicle, turning left or right, or when merging into traffic. Also use your turn signal before making a turnabout, turnaround, Entering or leaving a freeway or interstate. Pulling away from the curb. Pulling over to the side of the road. Signal every time you change direction, even when you do not see anyone else around. The vehicle you do not see is the most dangerous. Check your blind spots by looking over your shoulder. Remember, you do not have the right of way just by turning on your turn signals, and make sure you cancel your signals to avoid confusing other drivers. Your vehicle must have mechanical signals. Hand signals cannot be used. Signal when reducing speeds. Brake lights let other roadway users know that the vehicle in front is slowing down. Signal before reducing speed when. Turning off a roadway that does not have separate turning or exiting lanes. Parking or turning before an intersection. Section 9. Emergency situations and avoiding crashes. Emergencies and avoiding crashes. All drivers eventually will find themselves in an emergency situation. As careful as you are, there are situations that could cause a problem for you. If you are prepared, you may be able to prevent any serious outcomes. All drivers have the responsibility to prevent crashes. You have three options to avoid the crash or to reduce its impact. These options are braking, steering, or accelerating. 
Braking. The first reaction for most drivers to avoid a crash is to stop the vehicle. Most new vehicles are equipped with ABS, anti-lock braking system. The ABS will allow you to stop your vehicle without skidding and keep steering control. Be sure to read the vehicle owner's manual on how to use the ABS. The ABS system will allow you to stop without skidding. The general guidelines for you using ABS are Press on the brake pedal as hard as you can and keep applying pressure. ABS will work only if you keep the pressure on the brake pedal. You may feel the pedal vibrate and you may hear a clicking noise. This is normal. You can still steer your vehicle. If your vehicle is not equipped with ABS, refer to your vehicle's owner's manual for proper braking procedure. Steering you may be able to avoid a crash by quickly steering around a problem. This is sometimes referred to as swerving. To quickly steer around a problem. This section covers Emergencies and avoiding crashes Collisions Vehicle malfunctions Make sure you have a good grip with both hands on the steering wheel. Steer in the direction you want to go, but try to avoid other traffic. When you have cleared the problem, steer in the opposite direction to straighten out your vehicle, gain control, and start slowing. Both hands should remain on the steering wheel at all times, except to use one hand for some other driving task. Utilizing braking and steering is a good way to avoid obstacles in the roadway, like animals. If an animal runs in front of your vehicle, you should brake and steer to miss the animal. Accelerating it may be necessary to accelerate to avoid a crash. It may happen when another vehicle is about to hit you from behind or the side. Dealing with skids Skids are caused when you are traveling too fast for conditions, when you stop too suddenly, or when the tires can no longer grip the roadway. When you begin to skid, you have little control of your vehicle. You must develop the skill to regain control of your vehicle when a loss of traction occurs and the vehicle begins to skid. Drivers without these skills respond to a skid by panicking, stomping on the brake, and then overcorrecting the steering. These actions will only make a skid worse and often result in a vehicle collision, which could be fatal. If your vehicle begins to skid, here is how to regain control of your vehicle. Release the brake or accelerator and look where you want to go. If you are skidding in a straight line and your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes, apply consistent pressure to the brake in order to slow the vehicle. If you do not have anti-lock, do not brake hard. This will only lock your wheels and make the skid worse. Instead, slow the vehicle by pumping the brakes gently. If you begin to skid sideways, you need to turn the wheel in the direction the back of the vehicle is skidding. This will allow the front of the vehicle to line up with the back. As soon as the vehicle begins to straighten out, turn the steering wheel back to prevent the vehicle from skidding the opposite direction. Continue to correct your steering, left and right, until you recover completely from the skid. The most important vehicle control to use during a skid is the steering wheel. Uneven surface drop-offs Uneven surface drop-offs can cause serious crashes if you react improperly. Avoid panic steering in which you try to return to the pavement as soon as your wheels leave the pavement. If your vehicle leaves the paved road, slow down gradually, when safe to do so, and turn quickly back onto the pavement. Collisions If you are involved in a collision, stop your vehicle at or near the collision scene. Remain with the vehicle until the law enforcement officer arrives and has questioned everyone involved. In accordance with Kentucky law, when involved in a non-injury accident move the damaged vehicles to the shoulder of the roadway. KRS 189.5801-B Get the names and addresses of all people involved in the collision and any witnesses. Record the following information regarding any other operators. Name, address, and driver license number. License plate number, VIN, make, model, and year of all vehicles. Insurance company name and telephone number for each vehicle. Record any damage to the vehicles by making a list of damages and taking photographs. 
record exactly what happened immediately before and after the collision. If the collision involves a parked vehicle, try to locate the owner. If you cannot, leave a note where it can be seen and include in the note your name, your address, your driver license number, your license plate number, along with the date and time of the collision. Any person who is involved in an automobile collision resulting in any property damage exceeding $500 in which an investigation is not conducted by a law enforcement officer, shall file a written report of the accident with the Kentucky State Police within 10, 10, days of the collision. You can electronically complete, print, and submit a Commonwealth of Kentucky Civilian Traffic Collision Report at routing, slash. Send paper copies to Kentucky State Police, 1266, Louisville Road, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40601. Do not complete a civilian collision report if the collision was investigated by a law enforcement officer. First Aid to Collision Victims By prompt and proper action, you may be able to assist in saving a life or in easing the pain and suffering of persons who have been injured in automobile collisions or other mishaps. If possible, call emergency medical personnel and notify law enforcement. You should clearly and correctly state the place of the accident so that emergency personnel and law enforcement can locate you easily. Only in life-threatening emergencies should you attempt to remove an individual from a collision. If possible, wait for an emergency medical technician or ambulance rather than attempting to remove an individual from a collision. Keep the victim warm by covering them with a blanket or coat if necessary. Remember, Kentucky law requires the operator of any vehicle involved in a collision to immediately stop and ascertain the extent of any injury or damage and render reasonable assistance. Reasonable assistance may include carrying or making of arrangements for the carrying of the injured person to receive medical treatment if it is apparent that such treatment is necessary, or if transportation is requested by the injured person. Vehicle Malfunctions There is always a chance of a vehicle problem while driving. You should follow the recommended maintenance schedule listed in the vehicle owner's manual. Following these preventive measures greatly reduces the chance that your vehicle will have a problem. Brake Failure It is important to check your warning lights to be sure your vehicle works correctly. A brake warning light will tell you your brakes are not working properly. Do not drive if you see this warning light, however, if your brakes stop working while driving. Use the parking brake. Pull on the parking brake handle in the center console or push the parking brake foot pedal slowly so you will not lock the rear wheels and cause a skid. Be ready to release the brake if the vehicle does start to skid. If that does not work, turn off the engine and look for a safe place to slow to a stop. Make sure the vehicle is off the roadway. Do not continue to drive the vehicle without working brakes. Tire blowout. Tire blowout is a rapid deflation of air from the tire. If a front tire blows out, the vehicle will pull sharply in the direction of the blowout. If a rear tire blows out, the vehicle will wobble, shake, and pull some in the direction of the blowout. If a tire blows out or suddenly goes flat, grip the steering wheel firmly and keep the vehicle going straight. Slow down gradually. Take your foot off the accelerator pedal. Do not brake, allow the vehicle to slow by itself or brake gently if necessary. Do not stop on the road if at all possible, pull off the road in a safe place and turn on emergency flashers. Have the tire changed and replaced. Power failure. If the engine shuts off while you are driving, keep a strong grip on the steering wheel. Be aware that the steering wheel may be difficult to turn, but you can turn it. Look for an escape path. Do not brake hard, instead, brake with steady pressure on the pedal, slow down, and then pull off the roadway. Stop and try to restart the engine. If unsuccessful, raise the hood and turn on the emergency flashers. Call for help. Stuck accelerator. If your vehicle is accelerating out of control, turn off the engine. Shift to neutral and search for an escape path. 
steer smoothly, brake gently, and pull off the roadway. Have the pedal repaired at a service center before driving again. Vehicle breakdown and emergency signals. When your vehicle breaks down on the highway, make sure other roadway users can see your disabled vehicle. Crashes often occur because a driver does not see a disabled vehicle until it is too late to stop. If you have mechanical trouble and must stop, follow these guidelines. Pull completely off the road, to the right side of the road if possible. If you cannot get completely off the roadway, try to stop where your vehicle can be seen from a distance. Do not stop just over a hill or just around a curve. Turn on your emergency flashers to show your vehicle is disabled. Lift the hood to show other drivers you need assistance. Try to warn other roadway users that your vehicle is there. Place emergency flares about 200 to 300 feet behind the vehicle, giving other drivers some time to change lanes if necessary. If available, use your cell phone or other device to notify authorities that your vehicle or another vehicle has broken down. Many roadways have signs indicating the telephone number to call in an emergency. Section 10. Sharing the Road Everybody has a right to the roadway. Remember to be courteous and communicate your presence and intentions to avoid crashes. Pedestrians Pedestrians are difficult to see and it is difficult to determine their intentions. As a driver, you should always be prepared to yield to pedestrians even if they are not in a crosswalk. You must yield when a pedestrian is in a crosswalk, even if it is unmarked, including mid-block crosswalks marked by warning signs and pavement markings. You must yield the right-of-way to all pedestrians in the intersection even if the traffic light is green. When making a right or left turn on red, you must be prepared to yield the right-of-way to pedestrians. When driving next to parked or stopped vehicles, pedestrians can walk out between these vehicles. Slow down and do not pass until you are sure there are no pedestrians crossing in front of it. Check for pedestrians in your path before backing, especially in parking lots or places where there are many pedestrians. Be careful in playground and residential areas where children could run out from between parked vehicles. It is a good idea to drive slower than the speed limit in these areas and be prepared to stop quickly. In a school zone when lights are flashing or children are present, you must obey a slower speed limit. At a school crossing where there is traffic patrol, stop and yield if you are signaled to do so. Every pedestrian crossing a roadway at a point other than within a marked crosswalk or within an unmarked crosswalk at an intersection shall yield the right-of-way to all vehicles. Blind Pedestrian Right-of-Way Kentucky law requires operators of a vehicle to yield the right-of-way to a blind pedestrian carrying a clearly visible white cane or accompanied by an assistance dog. Failure to yield the right-of-way to a blind pedestrian is a violation that could result in a fine up to $250, $250. When approaching a crosswalk, drivers should be observant for pedestrians. Drivers should pay particular attention to any pedestrians using a white cane or guide dog. Below are some suggestions for helping pedestrians who are blind. At a stoplight or sign, do not stop your vehicle more than 5, 5 feet from the crosswalk unless there is an advanced stop bar line. A blind pedestrian uses the sound of your vehicle as a guide, so drive up to the crosswalk to allow the person to hear you. Drivers of electric and hybrid vehicles must be extra alert to blind pedestrians as they may be unaware of your presence due to the silent nature of these vehicles. Do not give the blind pedestrian verbal directions. The blind pedestrian listens to all traffic sounds before deciding to cross the street. Do not wait too long for the blind pedestrian to cross the street. If the person takes a step back and pulls in the cane, that is a definite sign you should go. Do not stop in the middle of a crosswalk. This forces the blind pedestrian to go around your car and into traffic outside of the crosswalk. Do not honk your horn at a blind person. The blind person has no idea who you are honking at and may be startled by the noise. Bicyclists 
Bicycles are considered vehicles when on roadways. Bicyclists are required and expected to follow the same rules of the road as motorized vehicles. As a motorist, you should know that a bicyclist has the same rights, privileges, and responsibilities as you. Respect for each other will aid in the smooth flow of traffic. Bicyclists may not be easily seen in traffic. You must be alert for bicyclists and be extra careful when approaching them. Just as motorists have different levels of skill, bicyclists also have varying levels of skills. A skillful bicyclist rides predictably and holds a steady line. An unskillful bicyclist may swerve unpredictably, ignore traffic signs and signals, and ride without a light at night. If you see an unskillful bicyclist, be ready for any sudden movements. As a driver, you must Yield to bicyclists in intersections as you would for pedestrians and other vehicles. Yield right of way when a bicycle path or bike lane intersects a road. Do not stop, park, or drive on a designated bicycle path or lane unless you are entering or leaving an alley or driveway, performing official duties, directed by a police officer, or an emergency situation exists. Allow as much space as possible and slow down when approaching or passing a bicyclist. You should slow down and let the cyclist clear the intersection before making your turn. Avoid slowing down or stopping quickly. A motor vehicle's brakes are more powerful than a bicycle's and you could cause a crash. Avoid sounding your horn close to bicyclists unless there is a chance of a crash. Sounding your horn to alert your presence may startle bicyclists and cause them to steer into your path and crash. Watch carefully for bicyclists entering your lane. Be especially careful if you see children riding bikes on the sidewalk. They may come onto the road. Avoid turning sharply in front of a bicyclist and do not force a bicyclist off the road. Although bicyclists are required to ride in the direction of traffic, you should look for them riding anywhere on the roadway. Be particularly careful around bicyclists when the roadway is wet or covered with sand or gravel. These conditions affect bicycles much more than vehicles. A signal is required for a vehicle, bicycle, that is not a motor vehicle and may be given by either hand signals, signal lamps, or mechanical signal devices. The signal shall be given intermittently for the last 50, 50, feet traveled by the vehicle, before the turn. Cooperate with bicyclists. They are required to use hand signals when turning and stopping. However, Keep in mind that bicyclists may be unable to signal if road or traffic conditions require them to keep both hands on the handlebars. Look for other clues of a bicyclist's intent, such as turning his or her head or looking over his or her shoulder before changing lane position. Right turn or right turn. When parked on the street, check to the sides and rear for bicyclists before you open your vehicle door. You should check for bicyclists in your path before backing. Be especially cautious near schools or residential areas where bicyclists may be present. When passing a bicyclist, slow down and allow as much space as possible, and consider the bicyclist's speed when you pass. At least three feet of space is recommended when passing bicyclists, and the passing vehicles should move back into the right lane only when well clear of the bicyclist. Some counties have local ordinances. These control the operation and parking of bicycles within city limits. As a driver, it is important for you to know what they are and to obey them at all times. Rules for bicyclists Never ride on interstates and parkways. Use hand signals to communicate your actions to other vehicles. Obey the instructions of official traffic control signals and signs. Stop at stop signs and for stop lights just like a motor vehicle. Operate a bicycle within posted speed limits or at a rate reasonable for existing conditions. Ride a bicycle on the right side of the road with traffic. Yield to pedestrians in crosswalks and on sidewalks. Give an audible warning, bell or horn, before passing pedestrians. When riding at night, operate the bicycle with a white light visible from the front and a red reflector or light visible from the rear. All slower-moving vehicles, including bicycles, shall drive as closely as practical to the right-hand boundary of the highway.
Extreme caution should be used when moving out into the center of the road to avoid road debris, to pass another vehicle, or to make a left turn. Do not ride on the sidewalk. Never park a bicycle on a sidewalk in such a way as to interfere with pedestrian traffic. Ride on a bike path adjacent to the roadway, if one is provided. Carry no more persons than the number for which the bicycle is designed and equipped. Never ride more than two abreast so as to interfere with the normal movement of traffic. Electric low-speed scooter An electric low-speed scooter is defined as a device that weighs less than 100. 100 pounds and is equipped with wheels, handlebars, and a brake adequate enough to stop and park the device. It is designed to be stood or sat upon and propelled by an electric motor, human power, or both. Regardless of the type of propulsion, an electric low-speed scooter is designed to operate at a maximum speed of 20, 20 miles per hour on a paved level surface. A person 16, 16 years of age or older may operate an electric low-speed scooter on a highway, bicycle lane, or bicycle path. Electric low-speed scooters shall be subject to traffic regulation in the same way that bicycles are required to obey traffic laws, and motorists shall use caution around them in the same way as well. An electric low-speed scooter shall be equipped with at least one, one, headlamp, and at least one, one, rear red light. These lights shall be illuminated from one-half, one-half, hour after sunset to one-half, one-half, hour before sunrise or at other times when there is low visibility. An electric low-speed scooter may be parked on a sidewalk if it does not impede the reasonable movement of pedestrian or other traffic. Compliance with all local government ordinances is required. Motorcyclists Motorcyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as other drivers. However, it may be more difficult to see them. There are special situations and conditions we need to be aware of so we can safely share the road with motorcycles. Allow a motorcyclist a full lane width. Do not share the lane. The motorcycle needs space for the motorcyclist to react to other traffic. Motorcycles are small and therefore more difficult to see. Be aware that motorcycles can be part of the traffic mix. Always check your mirrors, and blind spots for them. Before turning left, be alert for motorcycles by looking carefully to the front and sides of your vehicle. Do not assume a motorcycle is turning when you see its turn signal flashing. Motorcycle turn signals may not self-cancel, and the motorcyclist may have forgotten to turn them off. Wait to be sure the rider is going to turn before you proceed. When following a motorcyclist, allow for a minimum 4-second following distance or more in wet conditions, or you may not have enough time or space to avoid a crash. Motorcycle riders may suddenly need to change speed or adjust lane position to avoid hazards such as potholes, gravel, wet or slippery surfaces, pavement seams, railroad crossings, and grooved pavement, which can be deadly to a motorcyclist. Keep in mind that scooters and mopeds travel at much lower speeds than motorcycles. Commercial Vehicles More than 250,000 crashes occur between cars and commercial vehicles each year. Many of these crashes could be avoided by keeping these points in mind. Commercial vehicles are generally larger and less maneuverable than cars. These vehicles have much larger blind spots than cars. They have longer stopping and accelerating distances and need more room to turn. The No Zone The No Zone is the area around large trucks or buses where vehicles disappear from the commercial driver's view into blind spots. These blind spots are on the sides, rear, and front of the large vehicle. Side No Zones Large trucks and buses have big No Zones on both sides. They are much larger than your vehicle's blind spots. Trucks have a larger blind spot on their right side, starting behind the cab and extending up to the length of the truck. If you cannot see the driver's face in the side view mirror, he or she cannot see you. When possible, avoid driving alongside large vehicles. If the driver needs to swerve or change lanes, the chances of a crash are greatly increased. Front no zones, because of a large vehicle size and weight, they take longer to stop than cars. 
A loaded truck with good tires and properly adjusted brakes, under ideal conditions, traveling at 55 miles per hour requires at least 335 feet before coming to a complete stop, or greater than one and a half times the stopping distance of a car. Therefore, it is essential not to change lanes in front of a large vehicle or enter a roadway in front of a large vehicle. When passing a large vehicle, look for the whole front of the vehicle in your rearview mirror before pulling in front and maintaining speed. Rear No Zones Unlike cars, large vehicles have huge blind spots directly behind them that extend up to 200 feet. If you are too close, the large vehicle cannot see your car, and you cannot see what is ahead of you. If the large vehicle breaks or stops suddenly, you have no place to go and could run into the vehicle. To prevent this, you need to pay close attention when following a large vehicle. Avoid following the vehicle too closely and position your vehicle so the driver can see it in his or her side mirrors. When traveling up or down steep hills, large vehicles must drive slowly, approximately 35 miles per hour, and therefore use the right lane. Avoid driving in the right lane, if possible, when traveling up or down hills, as well as near truckway stations, where large vehicles will be attempting to re-enter faster-moving traffic. By avoiding the right lane in these areas, you will reduce the possibility of a crash. Turning Pay close attention to large vehicles' turn signals and give them plenty of room to maneuver. When a truck or bus needs to make a Right turn, the driver will sometimes swing the vehicle wide to the left to safely turn right and clear the corner of a curb or other obstruction. Sometimes space from other lanes is used to clear corners. If you try to get in between the truck or bus and the curb, you will be squeezed in between the vehicle and could suffer a serious crash. To avoid a crash, do not turn until the truck or bus has completed its turn. Keep in mind. When you meet a truck coming from the opposite direction, keep as far as possible to the right side of the roadway to avoid a sideswept crash and to reduce the wind turbulence between the two vehicles, which pushes the vehicles apart. Many crashes with large vehicles occur at intersections because motorists are unable to judge accurately the speed of a truck approaching before making a left turn. When in doubt about the speed of an oncoming truck or bus, do not turn left in its path. The truck or bus may be going faster than you think, and it takes longer for the truck or bus to stop than a car. Many intersections are marked with stop lines to show where you must come to a complete stop. These stop lines help to set you farther back at an intersection to give larger vehicles more turning space. Always stop behind stop lines. Do not cut off a large vehicle in traffic or on the highway to reach an exit or turn or to beat a truck into a single lane construction zone. The few seconds that might be saved are not worth a life. On mountain roads or downgrades, watch for fast approaching trucks. If one seems out of control or unable to slow down, get out of the way. On long downgrades, there are sometimes special escape or runaway ramps for trucks. These ramps are for use only by large vehicles that are out of control or cannot stop because of brake failure. Never stop or park in the vicinity of these ramps. When stopped behind a truck on an upgrade, stay to the left of your lane where the driver can see you. Allow extra space between you and the truck in case the truck drifts backwards slightly. Avoid driving in the right lane in the vicinity of truckway stations where slow-moving trucks will be attempting to re-enter faster-moving traffic. You will reduce the possibility of rear-ending or being rear-ended by a large vehicle. Avoid driving near vehicles carrying hazardous materials. These vehicles will be clearly marked with the type of hazardous materials they are transporting. Vehicles carrying hazardous materials must stop at all railroad crossings. Be prepared. Emergency Vehicles Emergency vehicles will be equipped with sirens, flashing lights, and special horns to help them move through traffic. As a driver, you must yield right-of-way to an emergency vehicle when the flashing lights and siren are on by pulling over to the edge of the road so the emergency vehicles may pass. Avoid blocking intersections. Kentucky law specifically requires drivers to yield the right-of-way to any vehicle displaying a flashing red or blue light or sounding a siren. When you become aware of the approach of a vehicle displaying a flashing red or blue light, 
or when you hear a siren, you must immediately drive to the right side of the road or to the curb, clear of any intersection, and stop. You must remain stopped until the emergency vehicle has passed, unless you are directed by a police officer or a firefighter to move. It is also unlawful to follow any emergency vehicle closer than 500 feet. Police and Traffic Stops What to do and expect when pulled over by law enforcement In order to pull you over, the police will activate the lights and siren on the police vehicle. Stay calm if this occurs, and do not bring your vehicle to an abrupt stop on the travel portion of the roadway. Turn off your engine. Turn on your hazard flashers and, if at night, your interior lights to help the officer see that everything is in order inside the vehicle. Completely roll down your window so that you and the officer can communicate. Remain calm and keep your safety belt fastened. Ask your passengers to do so as well. Do not start gathering your driver's license, registration, and insurance. Instead, keep your hands on the steering wheel and limit movements so the officer does not think you are hiding or searching for something. When requested, locate and provide your driver's license, proof of insurance, and vehicle registration. Before reaching for these documents, first tell the officer where they are located. Then reach for them slowly with one hand on the wheel. Answer the officer's questions fully and clearly. Remain in the vehicle unless requested to get out. If you receive a citation, remain calm and do not argue with the law enforcement officer. Roadside traffic stops are not the proper or safe place to lodge complaints or resolve disputes. There are various reasons why an officer could ask you to stop or to get out of your vehicle. Listen carefully, follow all instructions given, and be patient with the investigative process. Never try to run from law enforcement. It is very dangerous, and many fatal crashes occur from police chases. The consequences of running from law enforcement are often more severe than the initial traffic citation. Once the officer has indicated the traffic stop is finished, please follow these steps while driving away to ensure your safety and that of the officer. Wait for the officer to return to the law enforcement vehicle. Be aware of traffic and your surroundings. Watch for departing police vehicle. Use your turn signal to re-enter traffic and Obey all traffic laws. Note, what to do and expect when pulled over by law enforcement was developed by the AAMVA, American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, Law Enforcement Standing Committee. Additional information can be found at https colon slash slash www.aamva.org slash law dash enforcement slash what to do when stopped by law enforcement. Move over laws. The incidents of law enforcement officers, emergency medical services, and fire department personnel being struck while performing duties at the roadside are increasing at a frightening pace. To lessen the problem, move-over laws have been enacted, which require drivers to slow and change lanes when approaching a roadside incident. Signs are posted on roadways in states that have such laws. When approaching an authorized emergency vehicle stopped on the roadside, you should proceed with caution by slowing and yielding the right-of-way by making a lane change into a lane not next to that of the authorized emergency vehicle if safety and traffic conditions permit. If a lane change is unsafe, slow down and proceed with caution while maintaining a safe speed for traffic conditions. Kentucky Move-Over Laws Kentucky law provides additional clarity to move-over laws. Drivers are required to exercise due caution when approaching police or other emergency vehicles stopped on the shoulder of the roadway. Approach slowly and move into the left lane on four-lane highways if it is safe to do so. On two-lane highways, approach slowly and pass with caution. Slow-moving vehicles Be alert for slow-moving vehicles, especially in rural areas. A fluorescent or reflective orange and red triangle displayed on the Rear of vehicles drawn by animal, farm equipment, or construction equipment means the vehicle is traveling less than 25 miles per hour. During the day, you will see the fluorescent orange triangle in the center of the symbol. During night driving, you will see the reflective red border of the symbol. Use caution when approaching a slow-moving vehicle and be sure it is safe before you pass. 
farm machinery, watch for tractors, combines, and other farm equipment moving across the road and traveling on state highways in rural areas. Pass with caution and Remember that the operator of the farm machinery cannot hear approaching vehicles. Animal-drawn vehicles and horseback riders, in some rural areas, you may be sharing the road with animal-drawn vehicles and horseback riders. They have the same rights to use the road as a motor vehicle and must follow the same rules of the road. They are subject to heavy damage and injury to the occupants if hit by a vehicle. Pass with caution and do not use your horn or rev the engine because this may scare the horse and cause a crash. To avoid other possible crashes, you should anticipate left turns made by animal-drawn vehicles into fields and driveways. Warning. Signs will be posted in areas where you are likely to find animal-drawn vehicles and horseback riders, so be alert. All-terrain vehicles, ATVs. Kentucky law defines an all-terrain vehicle, ATV, as any motor vehicle used for recreational off-road use. A person shall not operate an ATV upon any public highway or roadway or upon the right-of-way of any public highway or roadway. There are some exceptions to this restriction, and drivers should be aware that they may need to share the road with an all-terrain vehicle. Similarly, any operator of an all-terrain vehicle should become familiar with all laws and restrictions before operating the vehicle. Restrictions and Exceptions A person shall not operate an ATV on public or private property without consent or without wearing transportation cabinet-approved protective headgear at all times when in motion on public property. If under 16, 16 years of age shall not operate an ATV except under direct parental supervision and not without approved protective headgear at all times the vehicle is in motion. A parent or legal guardian of a minor who is under the age of 16, 16, or who does not possess an instruction permit, an intermediate license, or an operator's license, shall not knowingly allow that person to carry a passenger while operating an ATV. A person may operate an ATV on any two-lane public highway to cross the highway. While crossing, the operator shall cross at as close to a 90, 90, degree angle as is practical and safe and shall not travel on the highway for more than two-tenths, two-tenths, of a mile. A person may operate an ATV on any two-lane public highway if the operator is engaged in farm or agricultural-related activities, construction, road maintenance, or snow removal. A person who operates an ATV on a public highway must have a valid operator's license and comply with all traffic regulations must have at least one headlight and two taillights illuminated at all times, may only operate during daylight hours unless engaged in snow removal efforts or emergency road maintenance. Section 11. Special Driving Situations Night Driving Driving at night is more difficult and hazardous than daytime driving. The distance you can see in front is limited by light provided by your headlights. You can do these things to help with night driving. Use your high beams whenever there are no oncoming vehicles. High beams let you see twice as far as low beams. Dim your high beams for approaching traffic. If a vehicle comes toward you with their high beams on, look toward the right side of the road to keep from being distracted or momentarily blinded by their headlights. Use your low beams when following another vehicle and in fog, rain, or snow. Light from your high beams may cause glare, making it more difficult to see ahead. Some vehicles have fog lights that you can use in fog, snow, or rain. Avoid looking directly into oncoming headlights. Keep your eyes searching the road in front of your vehicle. Try to search well ahead of your headlight beams, looking for dark shapes on the roadway. Dim your lights whenever you come within 500 feet of oncoming vehicles and within 300 feet of any vehicle you are following. This section covers Night driving Funeral processions Work zones Rural road driving Auto cycles Safe trailering Glance occasionally to the right and left to determine the location of the edge of the pavement and hazards that may come from the sides. 
Do not wear sunglasses or colored lenses when driving at night or on overcast days. Tinted or colored lenses reduce your vision. Increase your following distance by adding at least one additional second for night driving conditions and at least two additional seconds for driving on unfamiliar roadways at night. The best rule to remember is to turn your headlights on whenever you have trouble seeing other vehicles. If you have trouble seeing another vehicle, chances are the driver is having trouble seeing your vehicle. Funeral Processions a funeral procession has the right of way at an intersection and may pass through the intersection if the procession is led by an escort vehicle displaying flashing yellow, red, or blue lights. The only exceptions are when the right of way is required by an emergency vehicle, when vehicles in the procession are directed otherwise by a police or safety officer, or when the vehicle is a train or locomotive. You must not drive your vehicle between the vehicles of a funeral procession except when authorized to do so by a police or safety officer. Do not turn on your headlights or engage in any other act for the purpose of securing right-of-way. Do not pass or overtake any vehicle in the procession unless directed to do so by a police or safety officer, or unless the procession is on a street, road, or highway outside the city, town, or urban county limits or unless the procession is on an interstate highway or state parkway. If you violate this law, you may receive a $250 fine or 90 days in jail. Work Zones A work zone is an area where roadwork takes place and may involve lane closures, detours, and moving equipment. Work zones have become increasingly dangerous for both workers and drivers. Approximately 40,000 people per year are injured as a result of motor vehicle crashes in work zones. When approaching a work zone, watch for signs, cones, barrels, large vehicles, and workers. Work zone signs have an orange background and black letters or symbols. Always reduce your speed in a work zone, even if there are no workers. The narrower lanes and rough. Pavement can create a hazardous condition. Note that Kentucky law allows for fines to be doubled in a highway work zone when signs are displayed informing drivers of the existence of a highway work zone and that fines are double in it. Additionally, at least one, one, bona fide worker must buy present. As a driver, in a work zone, you should Reduce your speed, increase your following distance, watch the traffic around you, and be prepared to stop. Use extreme caution when driving through a work zone at night whether workers are present or not. Adjust your lane position to allow space for workers and construction vehicles. Observe the posted work zone signs until you see end road work. Expect delays, plan for them, and leave early to reach your destination on time. When you can, use alternate routes and avoid work zones. Rural Road Driving Driving on rural highways can be dangerous. Stay alert, watch for warning signs, and obey the speed limit. Some road conditions and driving hazards are unique to rural roads. It is important to understand the different road conditions that you may experience on rural roads. Gravel or dirt, traction can be reduced on gravel or dirt roads. You should reduce your speed, increase your following distance, and realize you may skid when trying to stop your vehicle. Narrow roads, rural roads, are generally narrower and may have ditches or drop-offs instead of shoulders. You should reduce your speed, center your vehicle in your lane, and watch for oncoming traffic that may attempt to share your lane. Narrow and single-lane bridges, you should look for warning signs identifying narrow or single-lane bridges. Take turns crossing the bridge, generally, the first driver to the bridge has right-of-way. Open bridge gratings, or steel bridges, can reduce your traction. Reduce your speed, increase your following distance, and maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel. Areas of reduced vision, blind corners created by wooded areas, crops growing in fields and steep hills can limit how far you can see. In areas with reduced vision, always reduce your speed and be prepared to stop. Uncontrolled intersections, some rural intersections, are not controlled by yield or stop signs. These intersections can be very dangerous, so approach them with caution. When approaching an uncontrolled rural intersection, slow down and be prepared to stop for crossing or oncoming traffic. 
Auto Cycles An auto cycle is a motor vehicle that is uniquely defined, placing it in a category all by itself. An auto cycle has the following characteristics. Any operator or passenger is seated as they would be in a passenger car. Auto cycles travel with three, three, wheels in contact with the ground. Auto cycles operate at a speed that exceeds 40, 40, miles per hour. The operator and passenger ride either side by side or in tandem in a seating area that may be enclosed with a removable or fixed top. Is equipped with a three, three, point safety belt system. May be equipped with manufacturer, installed airbags, or a roll cage. Is designed to be controlled with a steering wheel and pedals, and is not an alternative speed motorcycle. An auto cycle is a special case because it is considered to be a motorcycle and shall comply with all traffic regulations. However, an operator of an auto cycle is not required to obtain a motorcycle license or endorsement and may operate the vehicle if the operator is in possession of a valid operator's license. An operator of an auto cycle is also exempt from any headgear requirements. Safe trailering. Towing a trailer. Many people are surprised at the extent of trailer towing. Trailers are towed billions of miles every year. Mobility, increased leisure time, popularity of do-it-yourself projects, and cost consciousness have created a need which can be best satisfied by vehicles towing trailers. Thus, even though towing a trailer may be an occasional practice for individuals, it is a common occurrence every day across the nation. The most important part, you. Your judgment and common sense are key to a safe trailering experience. Driver error is a contributing factor in the large majority of collisions and crashes involving vehicle-trailer combinations. It is vital that you make sure to hook up, load, and operate the vehicle-trailer combination properly. Loading a trailer Trailers must be loaded heavier in the front. Loading heavier items in the front of the trailer reduces the possibility of sway. Failure to load the trailer heavier in the front is a leading cause of vehicle-trailer mishaps. 60% of the cargo weight of a trailer should go in the front, nearest the towing vehicle, and 40% in the back. If the trailer begins to sway or whip, steer straight and reduce speed gradually, do not apply the brakes. Never increase speed. Stop as soon as you can safely get completely off the roadway. Check the cargo first to be sure the trailer is loaded heavier in front. Reload if necessary. Keep heavy items on the floor of the trailer, not packed on top of other items. Pack your cargo tightly and secure any partial loads with tie-downs. Safe driving with a trailer. Safe trailering simply involves adopting a good compensatory attitude. Even the most experienced drivers will compensate for the peculiarities of the vehicle they are driving. Trailering is no different. No matter how much experience people have, they cannot change the vehicle they are operating to fit their driving habits, but instead must change their driving to fit the vehicle. The mind must be adjusted to accept a slower pace of travel. Drive more slowly when towing. The maximum recommend speed for most vehicle-trailer combinations is 55 miles per hour. Driving slower also saves fuel and reduces your chances of losing control. Never exceed the posted speed limit. If driving conditions worsen, you must reduce speed even more. When going down a grade, slow down before starting down the hill. A vehicle-trailer combination requires more distance to stop. Allow extra space between your vehicle and the vehicle ahead of you when towing. When driving in rain, snow, or fog, allow even more space. When towing, your vehicle will require more distance too. Pass on hills or curves. When making turns while towing a trailer, remember that the trailer does not follow directly behind the car. The trailer may require extra room to safely turn. When backing up a trailer, go slowly. Keep your hand at the bottom of the steering wheel. To move the trailer left, move your hand to the left. To move to the right, move your hand to the right. If the trailer starts to jackknife, stop, and pull ahead to straighten out, then start again. Pro Driving Tips If you are unsure how to properly hook up, load, or drive with a trailer, seek advice from a trailer professional.
recognize you are no longer driving a vehicle, but a vehicle trailer combination. Before driving and at each fuel stop, walk around the vehicle trailer combination and recheck the hitch and coupler tightness, safety chains attachment, lights, and tire pressures. If, while driving, you hear an unusual noise or suspect trouble, stop at a safe place off the roadway to check on the problem. If you are driving a long distance, do not attempt to drive straight through. Plan a rest stop so you can drive in daylight while rested and alert. Safe trailering checklist. Load heavier in front. Hitch tight. Chains attached. Lights working. Tire pressure's okay. Reduce speed. Think ahead. Stop often for rest. Inspect often. Load secure. Wear your seat belt. Section 12. Test your knowledge. Select the alternative, A, B, or C, that best answers the question. Alcohol and other impairing drugs. Reduce your judgment. Decrease your reaction time. Improve your ability to focus. A yellow dashed line on your side of the roadway only means. Passing is prohibited on both sides. Passing is permitted on both sides. Passing is permitted on your side. If you arrive at a four-way intersection, controlled by stop signs at the same time as another driver, you should continue through the intersection. Yield the right-of-way to the driver on your right. Let the driver on your left go first. Which sign warns a divided highway begins? This road sign means Right curve Curvy road ahead Sharp curve ahead This section covers Sample knowledge test questions. Regulatory signs are Green Yellow White If a pedestrian is crossing in the middle of the street, not at a crosswalk, also known as jaywalking, even if it is illegal, you Must stop for them. Do not have to stop for them. Should honk your horn at them. Motorcycle operators have the right to Use a complete traffic lane. Share a traffic lane with a vehicle. Use the shoulder of a roadway. When approaching or passing a bicyclist, you should Slow down and allow as much space as possible. Sound your horn to alert your presence. Speed up and quickly pass the bicyclist. When driving at night, use your high beams when Fog, rain, or snow is present following another vehicle. There is no oncoming traffic approaching. A distraction is anything that takes your attention away from traffic lights and signs. Driving. The road in front of you. Correct answers. 1. A. 2. C. 3. B. 4. A. 5. C. 6. C. 7. A. 8. A. 9. A. 10. C. 11. B. American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators. 2021, February. Strengthening Distracted Driving Education, Legislations, and Enforcement, a white paper augmenting safe testing and deployment of vehicles equipped with automated driving systems guidelines. Retrieved from, Distracted Driving Education Legislation and Enforcement White Paper underscore final, dot pdf, aamva.org. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, Department of Transportation, DOT. 2016, December. Visual Manual NHTSA Driver Distraction Guidelines for Portable and Aftermarket Devices Pages 67 to 69 Retrieved from, Federal Register, Visual Manual NHTSA Driver Distraction Guidelines for Portable and Aftermarket Devices Virginia Tech Transportation Institute 2013, May, 2nd Edition NUBT study results continue to highlight the dangers of distracted driving. Retrieved from, new VTTI study results continue to highlight the dangers of distracted driving, Virginia. 
Tech Transportation Institute American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators 4401 Wilson Boulevard, Suite 700 Arlington, Virginia, 22203 703-522-4200 AMVA.org 2022 Copyright, Copyright All Rights Reserved American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators This manual is a supplement to the state's driver manual which covers rules of the road, signs, signals, roadway markings, and safe driving practices. Graphics and pictures contained within this manual are provided courtesy of Motorcycle Safety Foundation and Highway Safety Services, LLC.